Welcome, 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 welcome back to the ROC for another Tuesday night service, family. Guys, I'm so excited for what God's going to do here tonight, not only in my life or the members that are here lives, but also in your life, guys, because God is a good shepherd and he wants to lead you into his path and you are actually partaking in what he wants to do in these times by um, actually assembling in the saints, even though you're in another country, even though you're in another um, city, you are still partaking in the assembly of the saints, which is actually a commandment. We are actually called to come together because there is a commanded blessing and unity. When we're tied together, where we're in bond with one another, when we're connected with one another and the most high, there is a blessing that comes from, from that. And the Bible talks about how it's like the oil that dripped down Aaron's beard. And there, it's just an anointing that comes from unity, guys. So if this is your local church, if this is your online church, we welcome you guys and we ask you guys to just interact with us not only just by watching the live stream but we also ask that you guys interact under the videos if you guys if it's encouraging to you guys we ask you guys to say it you know because you never know that if your comments are going to encourage somebody um, and if this is your first time on the channel we welcome you we ask you to comment like and subscribe subscribe so you could receive notifications on any new videos that we post here at the ROC. And we have a whole bunch of stuff coming up, um, vlogs, we have sermons, we have workout videos, and we post here on the channel every Thursday. If you don't know already, um, and like I said again, guys, interact in the comment section. We want to hear what you guys like, what you guys don't like, you know, add, add some sauce into it, family. Um, and I want to welcome you guys to this pre-show. This is is not, I'm going to say it again, this is not pre-recorded. You are actually experiencing live moments here. Our production team works hard in getting the right angles and the visuals so you guys could, could, could feel like you're here through your phone screen or your TV screen. You know, I want you guys, if you have just joined, I want you to put a fire emoji in the chat. Get interactive tonight. Um, and yeah, so tonight, Pastor Joel Serrano will be giving a sermon called The Good Shepherd. And um, guys, you guys know Jesus to be the Good Shepherd. And I actually want to share a verse with you guys. It's John 10, 11. It says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is he who spoke in this verse right here. And um, the statement that he made, I am, is actually the, the statement that he made back in Exodus when he spoke to Moses. When he said, I am, he, that same statement is the same statement that he made when the guards pulled up on him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, I am, and they drew back. And there, right there, you see that Jesus Christ is God Almighty himself. Jesus Christ came from his throne so that you might have our everlasting life. He is the good shepherd. And a lot of people kind of don't understand um, the in-depth of, of, of what, what that saying means. And he actually refers to it because there is one. There is one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to take your life. And Jesus wants you to know that he is the good shepherd. But the devil, he does not want you to have eternal life through Christ. And he tries to come in and take, take us and lead us astray. But if we focus on Jesus, if we give ourselves onto Jesus, and if we humble Humble ourselves and be like a sheep and, 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 and listen and, and take heed to what the Lord is telling us. We will never be led astray. Um, so, yes, guys, I just want you guys to remember that the devil is real, but we're not scared of him because we have power. We have authority through Christ Jesus. And Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the one that protects us from harm. He is the one that leaves the 99. He leaves the 99 for you, for me, for everybody that has come to the body of Christ. And, and, and um, there are so many testimonies. I've heard so many testimonies of, of, of how people should have died, how people should have um, got injured, how people should have got, you know, 
just different circumstances that they should have gotten in. But God, by his grace and by his mercies, he saved them from those situations. And I also have a similar, similar testimony of how God left the 99 for the one. You know, um, I grew up in the hood. I grew up around a lot of um, gang activity, and I also partook in it at some point. And um, it, it was a, a fast life. I've seen a lot of people die. I've seen a lot of people um, go to jail. I've seen a lot of people get injured. A lot, just a lot of, um, a lot of hurt and a lot of death, you know, and he took me out of that scene. Um, and I, 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 at some point before I actually came to the knowledge of him, it didn't make any sense on why he was calling him, calling me. It didn't make any sense on why Jesus um, picked me out of all my family members to come follow him. And um, as I continued, he actually reveals you know, why he called me in this generation. Um, but yes, if, if, if you have not accepted the call to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let tonight be the night that you actually invite him into your life, into your heart, so he could transform you and so that you could know him and he could know you. You know, um, a lot of people say that they're going to heaven and, and, and they know God. God knows their hearts. But all in all, do, do you really know God like you say you do? Does he really know you? Because in the end, when we actually meet him, he's going to ask, um, uh, he's going to tell you something. If you were in relationship or with, if you weren't in relationship with him, you're, you're going to hear the words, depart from you. Depart from me. I've never knew you. You worker of iniquity. And I don't know about you, but that's some scary stuff. That is some scary stuff. You do not want to wait until the end of your life, until you close your eyes, to meet the, 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 the creator of the universe and for him to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, that, that's, that's, that's scary, guys, because we know that if we're not together with him in eternity, we'll be separated from him for eternity. And we know without the presence of God, there's death. There's, 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 it's just death and hellfire. And a lot of people, I've heard people say, we're experiencing hell right now on earth. This is hell. That's a lie. You know why? Because we have the sunlight. We have birds. We see the sunsets. We see all these beautiful wonders that God created. That's how I know, you know, this is a dispensation of grace. Before the coming of Jesus Christ, we're experiencing his mercy, his love. Because if you believe it, Jesus actually died about 2,000 years ago. And we're still alive right now. His wrath still has not fallen down on us just yet. Because the Bible talks about how God does not desire that any shall I'll perish, but that all might come to repentance and believe in the Son, believe in Jesus Christ. That's the only reason why this world is still spinning on the axis is because he desires for none to perish, but all to come to repentance and believe in Jesus Christ. So like I said, again, if you have not given your life to Christ yet, let tonight be the night where you surrender your life, where you give it all to him because he is him. He is him. A lot, of, a lot of people in this generation are like, I'm him. No, Jesus Christ is him. He is the great I am, the alpha and omega, the, the, the beginning and the end, you know. And, yeah, guys, if you guys are excited for tonight, I want you guys to put a fire emoji in the chat. Get up. You guys are kind of kind of boring in the chat tonight. Come on, guys. Put some fire emoji. And once again, I want to remind you guys to like this live and share it with your family and friends so that they might hear what the Good Shepherd and who the Good Shepherd is, um, and so that they might experience Jesus Christ for themselves. And also, guys, I want to remind you guys that we have a discipleship course. But guess what? To get to the discipleship course, you actually have to be plugged into our online community. And what is on our online community? It's called school. School is filled with over 3,000 members, about to be 4,000, with members from all over the world, from Nigeria, from UK, from, I don't know, Ireland, from, uh, I don't know, guys, but they're from all over the world, and it's just amazing to see them interact from day to day. They're sharing their testimonies. They're sharing their daily lives on what God is actually doing through their lives. If we have time, I actually want to share a testimony with you guys of um, somebody that emailed us. 
And before I share the testimony, I wanted to let you guys know if you have been blessed by the ROC um, and you're, you're from another state or you came to visit already, I want you guys to email us at info at the ROC.org. This is so you could share your testimony on what God has done. And again, I'm going to say it again. It is info at the ROC.org. You could send in your testimonies, and who knows, maybe it'll get read one of these days so somebody out there might be encouraged because we're called to encourage one another. All righty, this testimony is, is, is kind of lengthy, guys, so I want you guys to stay focused on the words that are coming out of my mouth. All right, this is from John K. He said, I grew up in a broken household. Parents divorced at three years old, dealt with a lot of rejection since a little kid. At the age of 12 is when my life started going downhill. Over the years, I developed a horrible video game and porn addiction. I dealt with being suicidal, having crippling anxiety, not even being able to go outside, depression, horrible paranoia. So much so, I ended up dropping out of school in ninth grade because of these things. Years later, God was drawing me in, giving me signs left and right until the day, until one day I was trying to finance an Xbox and couldn't, and couldn't afford it. I threw my phone and went on YouTube on my TV and Richard Lorenzo Jr. videos popped up on my recommendation of him casting demons out of people. At first, I thought they were completely fake. A lot of people do. Until I kept watching more and questioning if they were real than then actually believing they were real because of the genuine reactions. So I looked up Richard Lorenzo's Deliverance Prayer, and next thing I know, I'm laying in my bed and demons are coming out of me. I had a lot. I had a lot. He actually capitalized a lot come out of me. Then at the end of the video, he prayed to receive the Holy Ghost. It felt like my body was lit up with light and bliss. And then he prayed for, for tongues, and I started speaking in tongues, not even knowing what they were. This was all, all at night. I went to sleep the, the next day. I saw this big rainbow and just knew it was from God. I can confidently and happily say Jesus Christ removed all wickedness out of my life, and I no longer deal with any of it. I'm now going to church and watching you guys online every week, hoping to one day come in person. Thank you, ROC. Keep up the good work. And thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Guys, 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 these type of testimonies warm my heart, and they also encourage me and also the members to keep on going. People are actually being set free by videos. Do you know what that means? That means we're in the end of times. Jesus Christ is using video recordings to cast out demons and heal people. So, guys, it's, it's just a reality check that this is actually, actually going to end at some point. You know, you walking day to day, this, this, this concrete, this carpet, this building, it all will fade away. But if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you can live in eternity with him. You can live in his presence forever, guys. And um, he actually said he, he got delivered from porn. And a lot of people deal with that type of stuff. And if, if you're dealing with that tonight, tonight is the night to give it up. Because even though I can't see you do it, there is one who walks around and sees everything with his eyes. And that's God Almighty. And one day you will have to explain to him your deeds and your works if you don't accept Jesus Christ in your life. And um, once again, I want to encourage you guys to go out and spread the gospel, the gospel. That's what we believe here. We actually, week on a weekly basis, we go out and we share the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost because a lot of people, they do not know what they're being saved from. A lot of people grow up in religion and they hear of Jesus. They hear of, of, of this guy that came. Some of them don't even really believe it. Some of them think it's, it's folk tales or it's, um, it's, it's, it's make believe. But if we go out there and we know him, and we have a relationship with him, but we go out there, take the time to love them and tell them about Jesus and our personal experiences with him, we could actually help them from going into hellfire, guys. It, that, that, sh that should give you an urgency to be like, dang, like I need to stop being selfish and I actually need to go hit the fields. You know, if you're, if you're not evangelizing, I'm going to be real, I'm going to keep it 100 
You are being selfish. You are literally being selfish. You need to know that people's souls are at risk. Every single day, a lot of people are, are dying. And I don't even know why I'm, 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 I'm saying all this tonight because I don't usually go in depth like this, but I just have a, a, a urgency to tell you guys to go out and preach the gospel because many people I go out to downtown um, Orlando with my with my friends, and we 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 go spread the gospel to people outside of the clubs. And sometimes, guess what? We even go in the clubs to spread the gospel, just to be real. And we don't partake in the evil deeds that they're doing, but they gonna get the word. They gonna hear the gospel that night. So uh, we we went a, a couple of times, and there's just so many things you hear, so many lies from the enemy that people blurt out because they do not know. The Bible says, how will they know of Jesus unless somebody go out to them? How will they know unless somebody preach to them? That's why you're important. That's why you're still here on earth. Because if you think about it, why when we get saved, we just don't ascend up to heaven and go to heaven? You know why? Because we're called to go out and pull others out of the darkness. And you're called to do that. Everybody is called to be an evangelist. Jesus says, Go out and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say you with a purple hair, specifically just one person. He said everybody, and you're included in that everybody. And you need to go out and spread the good news. You need to go out and tell the love of Jesus Christ, guys. And once again, I'm just getting fired up. I want you guys to like, comment. And share this video if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because we drop here on a weekly basis. We drop videos, vlogs, um, you know, sermon clips, just all types of content so you guys could be encouraged. And so you guys could, could see what we do behind the scenes here at the ROC because we are a family. We, we don't just come, come um, every, every Saturday and Tuesday and say, hey, bye. No, we want to know each other. We want to get involved with each other. It's a community. We're involved in each other's lives, and we want you guys to also get involved with us because guess what? You're ex you're an extended family member, and we want to we want to um, enjoy these times with you. you. We want you guys to get involved, and you could get involved by taking the 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 discipleship course, and that's through the school application. And if you click the link that's pinned above, you could actually go and um, sign up. It's just one dollar a month. That's twelve dollars a year, guys. You guys probably subscribe to Netflix and subscribe to Hulu and subscribe to Nike, subscribe to whatever else is going on in the world. But this is a chance for you guys to actually partner with God, so you guys could actually receive could actually receive a blessing from the Lord because God does not need our funds. He does not need our money, but it is obedience unto him. And guess what? It also actually helps us to expand the kingdom here at the, R um, at the ROC and worldwide. Because if you guys don't know, we, we are planning to build centers across the world. And um, we, we, we need... Um, help in doing that. We need your partnership in doing that. And also, once you're plugged into the school app, you could actually take the Leadership School of Revival. Um, and Apostle actually pours into the members in the Revival team every Friday, and he posts throughout the week. And it's, it's a very intimate group. But if you guys would like to partake in it, go ahead and click the link above. Um, and I hope you guys have an amazing service. Once again, Pastor Joel will be giving a sermon on the Good Shepherd. Um, and if you do not know what the Good Shepherd is or who it is, you guys will find out tonight. And yes, enjoy the service. I want to remind you guys to get active in the worship, get active in the word, pull out your notebooks, pull out your iPads, pull out whatever it is that you use to, to take notes so you guys could remember um, what, what, what's when you guys go throughout your week or you guys could share the message with your friends by the notes you take, guys. It's going to be an amazing, amazing service. Run up the likes. Run up the comment section. You guys have an amazing night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Amen.
Do I got family in the building? Even the one serving. What's up, family? How's everybody doing today? Are we doing good? Every day is a good day, man. We woke up today. We are alive. We got 10 toes, 10 fingers, right? It's good. God is good. Amen. I got a scripture for you guys before we begin worship. It was so fitting for, you know, what, what Pastor Joel is going to, the preaching, the, the, the title of the sermon. John 10, we were actually talking about it back there with, um, with the members. John 10, 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Right there is telling you that not, not everyone among the sheep is a shepherd. There are many shepherds. There's a parable where Jesus talks about a shepherd walking through the proper gates to get into where the sheep are and others climbing the gates as of a thief. What does that tell you? That tells you that there are some that are getting amongst the sheep, using the sheep, using what God has ordained, a church for, for religious gain, for political gain, for money. But the good shepherd, how do you know he's a good shepherd? Because he gives his life for his sheep. What did Jesus do? He gave his life so that we may become sheep. I want everybody to stand up. I know there's not many of us here, but the Holy Spirit is here. Amen? Amen? This is the house of the Lord. Even if there's five, ten of us, we're going to receive from God as if there was a thousand of us. I want every eye closed. I want everybody to focus on Jesus. One thing I like to do when I pray, when I get into his presence, I know everybody's different, but I like to focus on him. I like to cast my worries, cast my burdens. I like to clear my head. It's real easy to think about so many things when you finally get a moment to yourself. But you're not alone right now. When you enter his presence, when you go to that secret place to pray, you're not alone. You're in his presence. So I want everybody to focus on Jesus right now. You don't have to know what he looks like. You know him. My sheep will hear my voice. I will know them. They will follow me. That's what the good shepherd said. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you laid your life down. That you lowered yourself. You humbled yourself. You entered a vessel. You came and you died and you rose for our lives, Father. This is not religion, God. This is relationship. Father, I pray right now, Lord, we all come into agreement. As we usher in your presence here tonight, Father, as you feel this atmosphere, as you begin to fill our minds, fill our hearts, Lord, I pray that we give you our burdens, that we give you what we have in our hearts, what we're carrying, what we're trying to handle, what we're trying to control in our own strength. God, I pray that every, every heart in here be submitted to you. That breakthrough come by dependency on you, Jesus. Fill our hearts, Lord. Fill this room with your atmosphere. Shift it. Shift their minds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough. For how you are going to be magnified and glorified in this place today. We love you, God. We love you, Lord, and it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And the church says together, amen, amen, amen. Y'all ready? I just wanted us to get into that. Fresh out of work, fresh out of whatever you guys were doing, so you already know we have to stop, slow down, stop, focus, so we can receive, amen? Y'all ready to worship? Y'all ready to worship for real? Amen, amen. Come on, help me welcome up the worship team. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. Hallelujah. Make noise for Jesus. 
I know it's a small crowd tonight, but I know y'all can make some noise for Jesus. Make noise for him. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all remember that day when you got baptized, how excited you was? Do you remember? I remember. Do y'all remember how lit it was when you decided to give your old life down and live for Jesus and pick up that cross? Y'all remember coming live in that water? Do y'all remember? I don't think they hear me. I don't think they hear me. I don't think they hear you. Do you hear me? <laughs> Amen. So everyone, I just want you to say Jesus on the count of one, two, three. One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. All right, let's go. Come on, clap. Clap. Come on, y'all not clapping? Come on. Make sure y'all clapping on beat too. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. Okay. I want to see y'all dance tonight. I want to see y'all get loose, just like David did. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns. Deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. There is a car stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of 
God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. I know y'all know. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. But anyways, we just thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Being in the presence of the Lord of God, it just changes you. It makes you a, a new creation each time. Each time. He's always there waiting for you. Waiting for my daughter. Waiting for my son. And he wants to spend time with you. Have y'all been lacking in that area? If you have, it's never too late. His door is always open for you. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yes. Dream after dream, you are speaking to me, breathing. Word after word of kingdom come, yes. Here I be, I can see the unseen, truly. One look at you and I'm undone. Yeah. I run to the throne room, I run to the throne room. Grace on my fearful way, only your perfect love for me remains. It's time after time, you stand close by my side, burning fire inside. I can't contain it. I run to the throne room, I run to the throne room, and I fall on my face with angels and saints, and all I can say is See you. 
for your life tonight. Fill my life till all this is you, Lord. us up in this moment. We thank you that your spirit is here. Thank you for your reckless love, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that your presence is here in the room tonight. Father, we ask that you rain down on us tonight, that you open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out your love on us tonight.
hands to him. Lift up your hands to receive it. Say open. We sing home. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him glory. Wow. Give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Come on. Is that it? Is that all you got? Come on. Give him glory. in this place I want to give you guys an opportunity to give but before we go into the giving I want to read you guys another testimony for those that were here um, last Saturday we, we've been getting testimonies from the international the people that we have internationally so not only everybody you see here or on Saturdays but we have a whole family of people all over I want to read you guys a testimony it says, good evening. I saw Pastor Richard post on Instagram sharing testimonies. Although my full testimony is about the experience with The Rock. One particular time related when I was watching Richard's YouTube channel while he was live last May. He had a bunch of people watching along who joined in the Zoom. In the past, he was heavy marijuana smoker. All the way from 14 to him now being 40. He says, I know when I needed to quit while watching his live stream, he stopped what he was saying. Something on the lines of, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you need to stop smoking weed. He was halfway through smoking a blunt. And that was the final push to push him to completely stop smoking weed. Right then and there, he turned off the blunt and threw away hundreds of dollars worth of weed in a garbage bag. And he hasn't smoked since that day. Give him glory. That's glory. He goes on to tell you how, how, how grateful he is for everything that we do here at The Rock and through the digital spaces. So imagine, Pastor Apostle was just preaching, and the Holy Spirit gave him an unction to release a message to somebody on the other side of that that was sitting down smoking weed, that you need to stop smoking weed. The Holy Spirit used Apostle to to completely change this man's life from, from being a, a user 24-7. He said he had hundreds of pounds of weed and he was in the middle of smoking and stopped and hasn't done it since. 
That's powerful. That's powerful. I want to give you guys a scripture as well. I want to talk about Paul the Apostle. See, Paul the Apostle was, he was very bold. He loved to protect and practice what he preached. And he got a lot of ridicule for talking about giving. They, they questioned his motives a lot of times, asking like as if he asked for too much. But he knew that it was truth. And in knowing that he was truth, he continued to teach it. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each you should give as you've decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And he is able to bless you abundantly. So all things at all times, having all that you need, will abound in every good work. So even though other people would question Paul and, and, and say, why do you always talk about giving? Why are you always saying this about giving? He told many churches and he taught them the principle of giving. Him knowing the truth and guarding the truth did not allow the opinions of what other people said about his giving messages to shift his heart and he continued to teach them. Because when you teach giving, you're telling the people that as you give, you receive. As you sow, so shall you reap. I want to give you guys an opportunity to partner here today with the ROC, along with the testimony and the scriptures, so you guys have an opportunity to give with revelation, knowing that you're giving on to a place that's moving in the Holy Spirit and God is changing lives and transforming through this ministry. Amen? These are the ways you should give. And I want to pray. I want everybody to stand up that's sitting down. And I want us to come into agreement for those that are giving here today. Giving is a revelation that once you catch the, the, the revelation of giving, first, you will never lack. Second, you will never care about what you have because you have the revelation that God is in complete control. It's not you're trying to hold on to every penny you're giving because you know that he's Jehovah Jireh and he will provide for you. So these are the ways you can give. Those that are online, I encourage y'all to give as well. And I want everybody to come into agreement with the prayer as I bless it. Even if you're not giving, come into agreement with our brothers and sisters as we help to expand the kingdom through the rock. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word does not return to you void. We thank you, Father God, that you are not a liar. Father, we give with the revelation, Father God, that you are our provider. We give, Father God, not withholding, not wondering if you're going to provide, not wondering how things are going to come about, Lord, because we know you are in complete control. And in faith, Father God, with revelation of your word, Lord, we give unto you. Father, I pray that you bless every single person that gives here tonight, Father God, to the measure that they give, Lord. And I pray that every, every good work will abound, Father God, and that you multiply this seed, Father, and as they plant it, Lord, it begins to grow. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church says together, amen. And the church says together, amen, amen, amen.
we sing something real quick? I just feel like the Lord like placed us in my heart. All of us, if we could all just stand up real quick. No instrument, just vocals, please. And worship team, it just goes. Oh, how we all love you. Yeshua. Oh, how we all love you. Yeshua. Oh, how we all love you. And just lift that up to the Lord. his name. I'll keep Jesus for just a second. Just keep your mind and heart just on Jesus right now. Oh, Jesus, we just open up our hearts to you tonight all together. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for the privilege and the honor for being in your presence. We thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for Jesus, man. And can you guys please give it up for the worship team? God good or what? Can you turn the light on? Yeah, thank you. How's everybody doing tonight? Praise God, praise God. Y'all amazing sheep of God are here tonight for a specific purpose. Right? He places us in, in, in places that we're supposed to be at the right time, right? Right moment. We are here together to glorify him, to exalt him, right? That's the, that's the whole purpose of life, to just exalt his name and glorify him in unity. Amen? Amen. Um, I want to welcome you all to the ROC. Raise your hand if you're new. New? You? Hey, let's give it up for them. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Charleston, South Carolina. Wow. 
praise God. Just, just for today? Just this whole week? Hey, praise God. Who else? You, you, you say you? Where you from? Orlando, Florida? Oh, amen, praise God. Who else? Right, first time. First time? Where you from? Jersey. Hey, praise God. I'm coming soon. Who else? You. Where you from? Kentucky? Come on. Who else? Apopka? Okay. First time though? Praise God. What about you? New York? Yeah. Prophetess? Yeah. Prophetess is from New York. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Who? You. Where are you from? The Bahamas. going soon. The ROC. What's up, man? How you doing, bro? Nice to see you back, man. Praise God. Who was it? First time. That's it? Well, praise God. Hey, welcome to the ROC where Jesus Christ is the rock. Praise God. Praise God. And I just, you know, of course, I got to give a, a warm welcome and just a, a, a very special uh, you know, I got to honor the man of the house, man, Jesus Christ. Y'all yeah, yeah, know, yeah, know he's here right now. I just, I, I, I hope y'all know that. Like he's here. For real, for real. I'm not joking. I'm not saying that just to say it. He's here. And I also want to honor our spiritual parents, apostle. Give it up for Apostle, man. Sacrificed so much. And Prophetess Carlene. Our spiritual mama. She's very sweet, but she gangster. And she don't play about her children. Her physical and spiritual. I'm just, hey, I'm, hey, raise your hand if you know. There goes. Hey, there go the fruit. So, all right. I want to talk about the Good Shepherd, <laughs> Jesus, man, Jesus. I do have a couple questions for everybody. I want us to be interactive. Hey, just stand up and just, we all got a loud voice. I know we all do. We all got a loud voice. We were, huh? Hey, we all, we, hey, we, we're all nationalities, right? 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 But guess what? I know we got a loud voice. Because God gave us that voice to worship him. To preach his gospel. To sound like trumpets. So we can't, we can't suppress that. Amen? So when, 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 I, when I call upon you, I need you to use that trumpet. Amen? All right. All right. First question. How can we all acknowledge how good God is? Come on, somebody. Worship, His presence, share the good news, huh? Prayer, smile. Okay, come on, come on, let's go. The Word of God, His promises. Remembrance. Huh? Waking up. Okay. Communion. That's very good. And all things give thanks. Come on, she coming out with the sword. Hey. Huh? Obedience. Meditation. On his word. Come on. Keeping his commandments. Love. Come on. Grace, humility, all these things are good. There, hey, there's no right answer. Y'all all said the right answer. What if I tell you that? I just, I'm just here to give you a way that he showed me to see his goodness, okay? The good shepherd. Everybody say Jesus, the good shepherd. Smack me up today, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. He, he, 
He punched me in my spirit. I ain't gonna lie. The way he showed me to notice his goodness is by... We first have to acknowledge ourselves. Why do you say that? Many of you are saying, what? Why do you have to acknowledge yourself? I'll tell you why. Because if we come to God saying, God, I'm good with you. Come on, God. You're already trying to enter his presence with pride. When you have to, you have to acknowledge yourself and say, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. And that's when he starts to show you how good he is. Because when you raise your hand, if you've reflected yourself with the Lord, compared yourself in a way, that's what I mean by reflecting. You'd be like, boy, I don't even belong. I, why am I even thinking about this? What the heck? What is this? I can't. But I'm going to give you a quick testimony about that, about myself. How many of you guys have, been, have gotten angry with the Lord? And be honest. Be honest. Hmm. I see a couple of hands down. You want to tell me you've never been angry with the Lord? I don't know about that. Yeah, come on, Deja. Hey, keep it real. I just want everybody to look at Deja. And I'm not saying and, and to joke about it. Remember what just happened, okay? It correlates with what I'm going to teach. So that's actually good. One day I was working and I was, man, I was pushing these heavy behind cans, man, so much weight. And it got stuck. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I consider myself a little, a little strong, right? Like physically, I'm just, ah, trying to push that thing, Pastor Benji. That thing went moving, boy. I was like, damn, this is a boulder. It, it was like a whole bunch of mail. And I was like, you know, you know, you know, when things don't go your way, you start complaining. Or when your when your mom told you to clean your room, you start speaking in tongues, low key. <laughs> you be like, mm -hmm. and you get to your room, you start. That's what I was doing with the can. This thing weighed five thousand. I weigh one eighty, and I'm trying to push it with my shoulder, putting my whole might into that thing. Nothing happening. You know what I said? I said, Lord, I'm very pissed off. I'm angry. I'm angry, God. Straight up. I kept it real. How many of you guys have held a grudge with God, like, you know, in, in, that, in the, the, the heat of the moment, for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you just, <laughs> raise your hand. Be real. Okay. And this is not me to sound any better than you. I will say about 10 to 15 seconds later, I repented. I said, dang. Woo. You know why? Because I felt like he showed me something so. And I'll never, I'll never forget this. I promise you. I think about this a lot. It's like I seen him like this and how pure and beautiful he is. And I said, God, I don't belong in your presence. I don't belong in your presence. Why, why am I mad at you? First of all, what, what, what is this? I said, God, I know it's me. I'm sorry. That's what I said. I said, I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. And that's when he showed me his goodness. He showed me how good he is because I literally realized I am nothing without him. But when I think I am something, I'm nothing. Another way, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Another way to acknowledge the goodness of God 
is to stop being superficial. The word super, superficial, it means, <laughs> y'all ready? Everybody say, y'all ready. Y'all ready. We, ready. we ready. All right. It means appearing to be true or real only unto examine more closely. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Appearing to be true or real only unto examined more closely. Ah. Wow. How many of you guys kept the... Hey, God, I'm good. We straight. But you still got on forgiveness. And then you say, <laughs> God, I don't want to take it there yet. Oh, God, I'm good. But you don't let me help you. You sure you're good? Being superficial is pride. Everybody say pride. pride. Y'all want to let go of pride right now? Amen. Put your right hand on your heart. Close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus. We let go of pride, of being superficial, surface level with you when you know all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Did y'all mean that? Praise God. By recognizing our weakness, recognizing our inability, this is the key to finding the strength of God is being able to say, I don't want you the way I say I do. I don't love you the way I should. I don't love the word the way I say. Being vulnerable before the Lord, that's when he comes into the depths of our hearts and touches all those dirty areas in our hearts and cleans it. We want deliverance? Raise your hand if you need deliverance. If you want deliverance, raise your hand. Humble yourself. Acknowledge how in need of God you are and you will catch your deliverance. You will catch the transformative power of the Holy Spirit be manifest in your life. Yes, can you catch deliverance right now? But what if I tell you, even laying hands and casting out demons out of you, it's the same recipe. Acknowledging that you need the Lord. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm a wretched. Change me. Clean me up. And the moment you start going down that path, he snatches you. I got you. This, this stung me. A lot of the times we forget that we need the Lord. Raise your hand if, that's, if that has been you in your past. Guess what? Me. Five times, six times, seven, a billion times. We forget. We're humans. And that's just a human nature. Amen? I'm going to say something that might catch you off guard. We are sometimes like the Pharisees. Okay, I say it. We are sometimes like the Pharisees. Like the Pharisees, they thought they could see. But Jesus said, you are blind. Because they didn't recognize that they were in need of the Lamb of God that was standing right in front of them. Sometimes, and what if I tell you, I repent right now to the Holy Spirit in my heart right now. Because I said the opposite of what he actually wanted me to say just now. 
He actually wanted, you saw how I said, like the Pharisees were. He wanted me to say, like the Pharisees are. So Holy Spirit, I repent. Sorry. I have no problem. Sometimes like the Pharisees, we are blind. And we don't acknowledge him. And we think we're good. And we go past him. We actually start actually doing what he's doing. What, 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 what they do, the Pharisees. They don't believe in the miracles. What if I tell you there's miracles happening in our life every single day? Ludwin, how many hours did you drive up here? Two hours? And by the grace of God, you made it here safely. Isn't that crazy? Who else came from far? You, you. Did did, 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 did you by any chance think, God, I need you on this drive? You know, the Bible says it's the small foxes. It's the small foxes. It, It could be the small foxes to sin or it could be the small foxes to righteousness. Because the Bible says to, to do what? Increase in righteousness, right? So how are you going to increase in righteousness? Pastor Benji, meditating on the word. The small foxes that many people don't do. Meditate on the word. Think about him day and night. The Bible says to dwell in his word. What does dwelling mean? How many of you guys have a home? By the grace of God. So y'all dwell in y'all place. You sleep there. You eat there. You sit in your couch, put on some Netflix. Who watching Netflix? Netflix. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We ain't no Pharisee here. But you see what I'm saying? That's your dwelling place. We have to dwell on the word with the small foxes. Amen? A lot of us sometimes think we can see because of certain levels of revelation we've caught. But if we recognize we're blind... Then we can see. Everybody say, I was once blind, but now I can see. What if I tell you that's a constant process? (laughs) It's a continuous process just like deliverance, revelation. That's how you go from what? Faith to faith and? Recognizing. Just because you go to another level don't mean just, all right, I got it. But Jesus says something the opposite from that. He says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. He didn't say, just because you go from faith to faith, hey, I'll let go, and you go ahead and do it. I got you. Hey, go ahead. No. According to Exodus 14, 14, he says, let me fight your battles, and you shall hold your peace. So God wants you to be still and know that he is God. What if I tell you those are all Bible scriptures? Not one sentence I just said from my own. He's telling everything in his word. The whole recipe is in his word. To what? Increasing righteousness. To understand that we need him. The Lord. Stay in that broken place. Everybody say that broken place. Isn't that crazy? Y'all was going to say the secret place. Like, that, that's, that's where you'd be broken. Huh? Jesus. <laughs> I'm a wretched Jesus. I need you. Hey, that, hey. <laughs> who go through that? Okay. Hey, Amen. We need more hands raised then. Praise God. Y'all saw, were y'all laughing at me in a good way or in a bad way? In a good way. Talk about it. I'm going to talk about it then, Deacon Octavia. The Bible says, not the Bible. I'm so used to saying that. That's crazy, bro. The Bible says. (laughs) What if I, (laughs) this is Pastor Joel says now. Okay. What if I tell you that Jesus Christ is attracted to weakness? 
and the understanding of one needing him. I could prove it with scripture really quick. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near those who have a broken heart and save, saves such as have a contrite spirit. Isn't that crazy? And what did I mention earlier? A broken place. When we stay in that state of brokenness, we're telling God, God, I need you. You know, I told the Lord, I said, God, bro, you know what's crazy? What is the wind? Y'all ever thought, what is the wind? Have y'all thought about that? When you walk outside, you, sh oh, it feel good today. Y'all ever thought about that? What, what is the wind? The ruach. You sure? Where does wind come from? Yeah, right? You know, the Bible says, the, 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 I believe it's the Hebrew word of the Holy Spirit is the ruach of God. Ruach HaKodesh. Right? And then it says in the New Testament, is, oh, no, no, it's, it's in the Greek, the ruach. And in, in, in Acts, when he, when he came in like a rush, like a gust of wind, right? Bro, isn't it crazy that it's the same word in the beginning when he breathed his breath onto Adam? Wind. So even the wind that we feel in is God. It's the small foxes. We need him to even breathe. We are literally breathing God. That's his, that's his life. Isn't that crazy? But we've grown to be so contempt to that. What does contempt mean? Somebody raise your hand. That Somebody that's not a part of ROC. Yeah. You. You. What does contempt mean? I feel so short every time I come from down there, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> right here. Disrespect. Anybody else? That's good. Comfortable. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sarah. Complacent. To be grateful. That's actually the opposite. It's okay. Content. I said contempt. Contempt. Now y'all know. So, Pastor, you're part of the ROC. I'm just to disregard. Familiar. That's, that's, that's not fair. You were there yesterday. I, ca I kind of ruined my sermon last night. <laughs> almost. Just almost. It's just, you know, like, y'all caught Revelation, you just want to share it to everybody. Like, here. <laughs> just get some of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus for everybody. Jesus for you. Jesus for you. Jesus for everybody. <laughs> It's amazing. I ain't gonna lie. I love talking about Jesus. Hey. So, contempt is literally mean to dishonor. You see what I'm saying? We grow so content with the small foxes of God that we start to dishonor Him in our hearts. Just even forgetting that we need Him to even breathe. So I saw, we all seen this post. We need Jesus to go to Walmart. Bro, that's so true. You know we walk by faith every single day. Every single day. I'm walking in faith in this stage. I'm jumping around in this, in, right? We're sitting down in that, in that chair in faith. Faith, 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 faith. Everything is just faith. But with some, we forget that we even need Jesus to even open our eyes from bed. Bro, we need him. We need, we need him. And when we dwell in that, meditate on that word, because it's in the word of God, right? Bruh, don't be crying everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you go. 
And what's crazy about it, Apostle said that last week, right? When you acknowledge how broken, right, how broken you are, that's when the, tr the trials and tribulations go quicker. How much are you willing to surrender to God? How much of your heart are you willing to say, God, before I finish this sentence, how many of you guys have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Almost the whole room. It's good. Ask some questions. I'm about to interrogate some of y'all. You know, hey, the Bible says test all spirits. Ooh. What is something that you're battling so hard right now? Ego. Ego. So pride. Okay. Josh, what about you? Um, I say isolation. Isolation. Yeah. So what does that stand for? Rejection. <laughs> Green shirt right there with the glasses. What's your name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? You right here? Kevin. I just got Kevin. I got baptized like last week. Amen. Up here. Praise God. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So 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 you've been born again for how long? Uh just for about a week now. But and guess what? That doesn't matter. Yeah. What do you think you need to grow from right now? Uh just going back to my sin. Going I, I have addiction like in my life that I've been struggling with my whole life. So well, since I was like 17, like, you know, alcohol and stuff like that, women, you know, that, and... So familiar stuff? Yes. Okay, amen. So you know what that stands from? Um, Rejection and pride. Ego. Pride. Pride. Right? Rejection. Because when you're prideful, you feel rejected. Mm -hmm. But we, that's going to break right now, in the name of Jesus. It's going to break tonight. <laughs> Gaia. I felt it. I got to ask you. Amen. What, what are some areas in your life that, that you're battling that you need to break away from? Um, insecurities and cursing. Insecurities and cursing? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's okay. We all, we all fall. Amen? Amen. What, 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 what does insecurity stem from? Rejection. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. You break chains. In Jesus' name. So everybody that I just spoke to right now, those are areas that you haven't let Jesus Christ load over your life. You see what I'm saying? Those are the areas that you need to, Jesus, I let it go in the altar. I place it, on, I place it onto your hand. Right? How, you, how do you humble yourself? How do you humble yourself? In prayer. That's good. It says it in, it says in the scripture. If my people will only humble themselves and pray, that's then I'll listen to their prayer, right? How's another, how's another way, Gaia? What's, oh, Melise, go ahead. You raise your hand. Surrendering. Surrendering. You just let it go, right? Fasting and prayer. Yeah, that's, that's humility. What's a, what's a deja? I hey, praise God. Days of, days of be fasting, boy. She, she ran straight to that one. Fasting prayer. <laughs> Another way to humble yourself is by saying, God, this that I care for, here, because you care for me. You see what I'm saying? Stop caring for the things that you care for and start caring for the things God cares for. And he cares for you. Because the Bible says you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you don't know how God loves you, how do you know that? How do you know that? How much God loves you? How are you going to love somebody else if you don't know the source of love? Everybody give it up for Prophetess Carly. Prophetess. So I know we're talking about the good shepherd.
but this has to be exposed and right exposure exposed is a good thing it's not a bad thing right we have to expose these things out of our hearts things right every single person right now who's feeling convicted be real from certain things in your own life you think bro i, I know the holy spirit downloading pew, pew. you're like damn boy i need to let go of this thing right here Ooh wee. but you thinking about something else this person thinking about something else you think about two years back, this person think about 15 years back. That's what the Holy Spirit does. You see what I mean? Because now you're acknowledging yourself first. So then you can say, God, I, you are so good. This is, this is a good recipe. This is a good recipe. Let's go further explore the wickedness of man and its implication providing a deeper understanding of our fallen nature. The wickedness of man, right? The Bible repeatedly emphasizes, emphasizes the wickedness and sinfulness of humanity. It reveals that we are all born with a sinful nature and are prone to disobedience and rebellion against God. Everybody say disobedience, disobedience. and rebellion. rebellion. Those are, that's, that, that, that's, hey, that's top three right there. Top two. Sorry, I forgot how to count. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 1 to and 2, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. What's that mean? That's not even the first verse completely. And he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Raise your hand, somebody. What's up, sir? To, to be in bondage, he made alive, though. He said he made you alive. He made you free from it. No, no, Eddie. What's up, Eddie? To revive. Spiritually and physically. And physically. Who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit who now works in the sense of disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath just as others. As the others. That's God letting you know. When you were once there, you come to me. When you let go of the disobedience, the pride, the, all these things that you're battling, he's going to make you alive in that area that you need to give up. I see it as, as a tree. Y'all ever seen the movie Avatar? Yeah. When, the, when, when the dude connect the, 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 the braid, that long braid and connects and then the, 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 light, the, the tree lights up? Yeah. That's how I see it every time when we let go of something that we need to let go into God. Because the Bible tells us that we are like trees, right? If in, 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 the, in, the, in the book of John chapter, I believe it's 15, he talks about the vine, right? And when you study a vine dresser, the, 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 the guy has to come and check the vine. And I've seen a video and it says that if the, if the vine is not getting enough Light, sunlight, that part of the branch starts to get mold. And it starts to get a specific disease for the tree. And it needs to, then the guy has to come in, start to cut it off. And ironically in, enough, the guy starts preaching in the, in the video. Let's watch it. So every time that we are exposing Something, because he's always exposing it to us. We just don't want to listen. The, the disobedience, the disobedience nature of man, right, and the rebellion. The, hey, son, daughter, I need you to get rid of this. But you're just like, that, 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 that was just my flesh. You're fulfilling the lust of the flesh, according to Ephesians. You see what I'm saying? Because... There ain't no way our puny brain is going to say, hey, you dealing with this. Nope. Nah. That ain't you. That's the Holy Ghost. Repent. Let it go. 
put it on the altar and let it burn. And Ephesians 2 highlights the the spiritual condition of humanity apart from God's grace. It desires us as being spiritually dead in our sins, following the ways of the world and being influenced by the devil. It emphasizes that all of us, without exception, have indulged in the desires of the flesh and mind, making us deserving of God's wrath. So remember when I was telling you that you first have to acknowledge yourself? You can't just go to God, God, yeah. God. Because if you go to God, right, you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. But the Bible says, you have to, you, Psalm 34, let's read it again. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and say such as a contrite spirit. When you go to God with that brokenness, he is near. He's always with you. But isn't it crazy that the when you when you are the the most broken in your life and you're just like I don't know what to do? How ironic is it that you say, Oh Lord, Jesus, I need you. Why you run to him when you're broken? When you're fully broken. Why why you don't run to him when you got everything? That brokenness, it don't mean that you gotta be crying all the time. That brokenness is, man, bro, I don't even deserve this, bro. But God is so good, man. Jesus. I was once a son of wrath. Man, I deserve to go to hell, man. But God, you are, you are just God. You are just Jesus. And you saw how it goes from brokenness to worship. Not, not, not what is it turning into? A sweet smelling aroma? Because your heart is in a, broken, in a broken state? That's what we need every single day. I looked at, man, I consecrated for one week, and I look at my wife, and I'm like, man, man babe, I love you so much. I looked at my wife sleeping last night. <sighs> Sorry, babe. Hey, you know white lies are, 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 are a lie, too. I can't, I'm sorry, babe. And I looked at her, I said, babe, I said, I, in my head, I said, man, I really love my wife so much, man. I love her so much. But you know what's crazy? A lot of the times in the spiritual warfare side of things, we focus on the, on the, on the, on the Ahab and the spiritual and, and, and the Jezebel, but, but God gave you her so you could love her like he loved the church. The, 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 whether she has the spirit of Jezebel, guess what you got to do? <laughs> you got to love her like Jesus loved the church. Because the Bible says, guess what? What does the Bible say about love? It holds no records of wrongdoing. And guess what? The good shepherd doesn't hold any, re- any records of your wrongdoing. He actually forgets them. He throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. And he grabs you, picks you up. You got to break your legs because obviously you, you know, you get a little whipping. He breaks your legs, but yet he's not harsh. He breaks your legs, yet he's not prideful. He tells you he's Alpha and Omega and King of all kings, yet he never said it with no pride. He's just telling you the, pr- the truth. You see what I'm saying? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But he never walks in pride. Isn't that crazy? He just knows who he is. And he's the king. He's the father. Yet, he, thim- he sympathizes with you. What does sympathy mean? Somebody raise a hand. Sympathy. What's up? It's actually the opposite. He sympathizes with you. That means he suffers with you. 
You see what I'm saying? That means is. Dang, bruh. I love this person so much. Let's go do it. Hey, come on. Come on. You battling? Come on. Let's go. That's what Jesus did. He picked them up. He picked them up in the spirit. He grabbed Pastor Benji, took his identity, put it on. Now he's made whole. That's what he did with every single one of us. Because he left Pastor Benji in the grave. Now he's a royal priesthood, right? Now he's a king. You know that every single one of you guys are wearing gold with white garments on right now? Literally. Because the Bible says that when we get to heaven, we're going to cast our crowns down. So what, how, we, we're going to, you already got them right now. You belong to Jesus? You already got a crown right now. And it's, on, it's placed on your head right now. He leaves you white as snow? Guess what? You have the white garment on right now. The Bible says that we're going to walk on streets of gold in heaven. That's a promise. We taste his promises here on earth right now. Imagine heaven. A dwelling place of his presence, love, compassion, sympathy, 24 Eternity, eternity, for eternity, 24-7 ain't even going to exist up there. <laughs> it's eternity. You know, sometimes we get caught up in saying it's God's time, and no, it ain't. It's God's will. God don't live in time. He live in eternity. Amen? I want you guys to imagine something. I want everybody to close their eyes. Imagine a shepherd who finds a group of lost sheep in a desolate place, in a dangerous place. These sheep are covered in filth, wounded, and completely unaware of the imminent danger they are in. In a similar way, humanity was lost and spiritually dead in sin, unaware of the eternal consequences we faced. Our hearts were stained by sin and were separated from God. Obviously, the dangers to that awaited us. Isn't that wild? You saw how it strategically was placed here, awaited. It ain't happening. Because the good shepherd came along, he noticed that you noticed that you needed a savior. He picked you up and washed you clean. Because you decided to what? Have their free will and let the good shepherd take you up. Because there's plenty of animals that do what? They fight. They, uh, no, no, no. Because they don't what? They don't have trust. Hey, there, hey, there's, hey, there's three things. There's loyalty, faithfulness, and trust. We can be faithful to the Lord. We can be loyal to the Lord, but not trust him. We need to let go of not trusting him. If we are faithful to him and we're loyal, why are we fighting so much to trust him? If he is in control of everything, if something in your day is not going the way you wanted it, don't you think it's happening for a reason? Don't you think it's God saying, okay, son, I'm using this as a mirror. I'm going to say it again. Okay, son, I'm using this situation as a mirror. So when you see yourself reacting according to your flesh, you can acknowledge yourself and say, God, I need you. And then he says, amen, I got you. Let me take that away. Let me take that rotten branch and cut it off and water that seed. Who ever seen the movie The Shack? I'm going to leave it at that. It's, it's called The Shack. 
Go, go watch it. How many, I'm going to say it again. How many, raise your hand if you have been in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the state of your life where you say, hey, you need to get rid of that. And you say, oh, no, that was my flesh. Raise your, raise, raise your hand. Amen. Because you know what the Bible say? Say, 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 say this with me. What? Say, say, um, okay. Say this with me. Say what? what? It says, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. I don't know if y'all want to write this down too. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? <laughs> Yeah, I want, the Bible says that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So your, your tongue has power. Yes. Say this with me. Y'all ready? Yes. The, heart the heart is deceitful above all things, above all things. And, desperately and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Can know so can you go to God and just be like, oh God, oh God. No, you have to say, God, I don't even know my own heart. God, I need you. He's the one that searches the heart and tests the mind. Not you. So if you don't even know how to do anything, sometimes we don't even know how to do certain things. Bruh, I'm going to be real. A lot of us don't even know how to wash dishes. So a whole bunch of dishwashers nowadays. We just throw it in that thing, whatever, right? Instead of grabbing that plate and taking your time, that's how we are when we're superficial with God. We want to get a quick little wash. Okay, I got a quick little revelation. Amen. Praise God. But you still thinking about how Gary didn't give you the $20 back. You see what I'm saying? Bruh, let him take you like a plate and wash you by hand. Amen. He's, he's the potter and we're the clay. Amen. Everything. I don't want no, hey, bro, if I come to you right now with a plate of rice and beans and you see pizza crust on the side, half eaten, you going to eat it? You're going to be like, bro, quit. But you see how we can reference everything to the spiritual side of things? Everything. I'm a basketball player. Pastor Benjamin is a basketball player. Bro, I reference basketball. Joe, you know this. Briggs, you know this. Basketball? Bruh, I see God, Jesus, I see it all. I'll be like, boy, I need to repent. Go play basketball? I need to repent. Play basketball again? I need to repent. Over and over and over again. For real. Hey, y'all want to repent daily? Go play basketball. Joe, ain't that right? <laughs> Just saying. Jeremiah... <laughs> Jeremiah 17 now reveals the deceitful nature of the human heart. It declares that our hearts are desperately. What does desperately mean? Somebody. Desperate. Come on, come on, Out loud. In dire need. So what does that look like? <laughs> That's what our hearts is doing with the wickedness. Y'all ever been walking and just get a wicked thought? I don't know. You be like, well, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. That's your heart. <laughs> Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Isn't that crazy? So that means you have to open up your heart, God. Take it out. We say, I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke. God, take it out. I need it gone. I don't want it. That's what we need to do. Now, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and take God's throne and take his place. Yes, he's given us authority, but we're also his servant. Bond servants. Bond servant is different than a slave. A bond servant is a willingful slave. So if you're calling yourself a bond servant, you need to go to the master and say, I need some help because I can't do this. I can't do it. I need you, Jesus. Yeah, 
I want another, I want to, I want us to envision another thing. Close your eyes. Picture a shepherd who has a sheep with a chronic condition that causes it to constantly stray from the flock. No matter how much the shepherd tries to guide this particular sheep, it continues to wander off. Listen, lured by its own desires. Similarly, our hearts can deceive us and lead us astray, tempting us to follow our own flesh, our fleshly desires, rather than submitting to God's guidance and authority. Isn't that crazy? Our hearts, I'm going to say it again. Our hearts tempting us. That means our flesh is our enemy. Our flesh, our thoughts, our hearts. You ever heard the saying, just follow your heart. Hey, that thing come from the devil himself. That's why we don't, hey, when we pray, I'm going to say this, bro. Even when you pray, don't even pray with your own heart. With your own heart. You say, hold up. God, your word says, no, 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 in the name of Jesus, amen. Yes, can you petition? Of course, according to his will. Not according to your heart. By diving deeper into the wickedness of man, we gain a more comprehensive understanding of our fallen nature. The Bible makes it clear that we are all born in a, with a sinful inclination, prone to disobedient and rebellion, re disobedience and rebellion against God. However, it is crucial to remember that the story does not end there. In the midst of our wickedness, God's goodness and mercy shine even brighter, recognizing our sinfulness allows us to appreciate the depths of God's love and need for his redemptive work in our life. So you need to understand that your wickedness has to be exposed so the goodness of God could overcome it. Yeah, hey, I know this is saying, I can't say, you know, verbatim, right? But it's like, the sun comes after the, the, the rainy day or something like that. Y'all know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's going to be wicked. You got you to gotta envision yourself going through that, 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 that dusty, out-of-order forest in your heart. Like if you're walking in there with a machete just cutting, ha, 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 eventually you're going to come out of there if you continue putting in the work. But the way in the physical how it looks is literally like this. Father, I need you. Take it out, Father. I let it all go. Father, they take it. Take it. Take it. And you don't feel it, guess what you do? Father, take it. Please. Take it out. I don't want it. Because the Bible says to come to his throne of grace with what? Boldness. You my father. Your words. Don't come in pride now. Father, your word says. I'm in desperate need of you. Help me. He washes you. Expose it. You cry. Now you're flying high. Right? <laughs> I had to get that Pastor Carlos anointing. <laughs> you know, when you're in the secret place and you... I'm not going to lie. Pastor Carlos anointed, bro, for real. That boy... That boy listened to the Holy Ghost. When he does that, he listening to the Holy Ghost. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you the recipe. I want to I'll turn the lights off, and I want to share a video real quick of what everything I just said looks like. Because how many of you guys are visual learners? All of 2024, bro. It don't matter if you're 50, 60 years old. Every single one of us. I don't care. Every single one of us, bro. This is what, this is what I, everything, can, can we turn this? 
Yeah, that's all right. Y'all can see? Y'all can see good? Everything that we just went through is going to be shown in the video. Y'all ready? Everybody say amen. amen. All right, drop it. That says train to heaven. And there's a whole bunch of luggage with pride, money, sin, fame. Right? Hate. And he's trying to get all his luggages. You turn the lights back on. You either have the chance to miss the train or to leave everything at the gates and enter the train. <clears throat> you saw how everything was just left there. Hey, bro, if it, it, he was trying to gather it, <gasps> but you saw when the, when the train passed, it was nicely organized. That's how we needed to be at the altar. God, here's pride. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me make some room. Rejection. Yes. Here you go. Uh, the bitterness I had to get for the twenty dollars. Here you go. <laughs> God. Psh, everything. Here you go. My heart. Let it go in the altar. And then you just leave it nicely organized right there, and, and you good to go. Now I want to touch something very, very good. Everybody say the good shepherd. The good shepherd. good shepherd. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path. Paths. Paths. Many. Of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Quick question. Now, how we, how we allow the Lord to do that? Listening to the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. Come on. They know me. They know me. And they what? And they follow me. You got to listen to the instructions. You got to listen to the details. Instructions are actually the small foxes. Remember what he told Adam? Don't touch. He didn't have to go into detail. That was just a simple instruction. A small fox. A small one. Don't touch. I'm going to go touch it anyways. Be See what I'm saying? So now, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want anything because I already have everything guiding me. Right? The shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me behind still waters. Because I, right, is talking about he makes me. So that means he says, come here, I got you. Right there, go lay down right there. Relax. 
He leads me beside the still waters, right? He leads you. Come on, I got you. Just, just follow me. They hear my voice, and they, they stu- and they follow me. Come on, follow me. Hey, stay in line. Come on. That's a constant every day. A lot of people say, I don't hear the voice of God. You ain't paying attention. You're not listening. The Lord is always speaking. If you can't hear his voice, open up your word. If you can't hear his voice, stop talking so much. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside in still water. So we go right back to verse 1, right? I have everything. So if I have everything, I'm definitely going to trust everything so he can lead me beside the still waters, right? He restores my soul. And again, pay attention to the details. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is talking about trusting God. You can have faithfulness, loyalty, but you can lack trust. Trust in the Lord because he will lead you in the paths of righteousness beside the still waters. And if you trust somebody, you're going to allow them to lay you down in green pastures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do a trust fall real quick? Come on. Come on, Pastor. Come on. This is trusting. Let's do another one. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go hard. You ready? I trust Pastor. You see what I'm saying? Because Pastor's strong. He's, he works out all that stuff. <laughs> he ain't going to let me fall. But the Lord is stronger than him. So when we walking down this path of the valley of what? The shadow of death. And we, we might get hit. We might stumble. But the shepherd's right there. The shepherd's like, I got you. Pastor. Let's do it one more time. Huh? <laughs> Y'all want to see? Y'all want to see it real quick? <laughs> huh? You said what? Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> what if I tell you I did that on purpose? I fell back. I turned around midway, and I, I didn't go to his hands. I wasn't trusting him. I turned around midway because I was trying to focus on where I was falling. When you focus in your own trust, the good shepherd's never going to catch you. You're not letting him fight your battles. You're not letting him trust you. You're not, you're not letting him. You're not letting him catch you. I can't even say it again. That was the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost. I, I can't. I tried to, but I, it was all messed up. I was like, hold up. Nah. But that was on purpose. You're going to fall very hard if you don't trust the Lord. When you don't allow yourself to acknowledge the wickedness of your own heart you're not going to understand the power of the the transformative power the holy spirit has the bible says that he will lead you to all truth not you and you can read the bible over and over again and you might not get no truth out of it because there ain't no spirit behind it it's just a whole bunch of my heart, which is desperately wicked. You could even look through the word of God, desperately wicked. <laughs> you need to relax, calm down, focus on Jesus. Say, God, I know I'm wicked. I need you. And because I'm opening up my word right now, 
I'm going to be still and know that you are God. I'm going to read without expectation. And every time I read this word, I'm going to focus on your voice because I am your sheep. I know you and I will follow you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're still on verse three. I want to break it down. I, I need to hurry up a little bit. He restores my soul. How does he restore your soul when you acknowledge that you need some cleaning up? Amen. He leads me in the path of righteousness, right, for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So just like that right there. If, I, if, if, if Psalm 23 is telling me that he is with me through all wickedness, you think I'm going to turn around when I get here and I fall? Oh, heck no. Lord, hey, Lord, you got me? All right. Amen. Praise God. Lord, you with me. You hitting the ground hard. You want me to be real? I fell right there. My back cracked. I feel, it feels kind of good, but it cracked. Think about what happens in the spirit when you fall and you hit the ground hard. You fall into condemnation, rejection, pride, isolation, all that stuff. You crack like an egg. For you are with me. The last, <laughs> the last sentence of verse 4 says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod is a representation of his what? His correction. Right? What is the Hebrew word of staff? It means a support. So, Joseph, come on. Joseph, come here. Try to walk up the stairs real quick and, and, and act like you don't know how to walk up the stairs. Just, just, just. Wait, 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 just listen. Lift up your left leg, step. Now with the other one. All right, now come up. Settle, settle, settle. You're going too fast. Now come up. Go again. Go again. All right. There you go. You got it? Amen. All right, go ahead. That's supporting. That right there is support. When you, if you saying, God, your correction, you correct me, it might hurt a little bit. But once that hurting's finished, you're going to come and you're going to support me. The Lord does. Hey, 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 stop. You good? All right, come on. That's, that's what his rod and staff is. And this is in the verse that we all know by heart. Why we ain't listening. And after all of that, after all of that, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Y'all know that new wave? Ew. Ew. That was too tough. That's too tough. Ew. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Ew. Like, oh, that's too tough. Right, Joe? Oh, that's too tough. Wow. Ah. Whew. Wow. You think I'm going to let Satan ruin that? You think I'm going to let pride ruin that? No. You think I'm going to let rejection ruin that? No. You think I'm going to let addiction ruin that? No. When he's saying that, he got you. Yeah. He got you. You don't need nothing else. He got you. He restores the soul. It doesn't say he restores the heart. The soul. He don't restore your mind, the soul. Look at these characteristics of charm that melt your heart. When you see him as the good shepherd, he will always be worthy of worship. Every time you come before his presence, God, I need you to even go into your presence. 
Help me. Show me. Show me. Show me. That right there, that's worship. <laughs> you already started your worship. He loves a broken heart, don't he? It's already a sweet smelling aroma. And he's near. And when he's near, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's so you're going to get freedom. John 10, 28. Oh, man, I love this Bible verse right here. I love this. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone, <laughs> neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You know this is Jesus talking, right? I'm going to repeat the, the verse again. All right, all right. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. But you can't jump out of it because you ain't trusting it. Psalm 23 is uh, uh, beautifully portrays Jesus as our good shepherd. He provides for our needs, grants us rest and refreshment, and leads us in paths of righteousness. He cares for our spiritual well-being and guides us into a life that honors him. This Bible verse, everybody knows it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart <laughs> and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your. This Bible verse reminds us of the importance of wholeheartedly trusting in the Lord. It, enc it encourages us to surrender every area of our lives to his lordship and acknowledging him in all our ways. When we give Jesus complete control, he promises to guide us and direct our paths. When you decide to give up, give it all up, Jesus, take it. The danger of partially surrendering. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they shall follow me. Jesus, our shepherd, desires an intimate relationship with us. He wants us to hear his voice and follow him wholeheartedly. However, when we withhold certain areas of our lives from his lordship, we risk missing out on his guidance, protection, and blessing. The invitation of total to total surrender, Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus invites us to follow him wholeheartedly. He calls us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and surrender every aspect of our lives to him. It is in, his, in this complete surrender that we find true fulfillment, purpose, and the abundant life he promises. As followers of Jesus, we have the privilege of having him as our, as our shepherd. He longs to care for us, guide us, and lead us in paths of righteousness. However, it is essential that we make him Lord over every area of our lives. Let us trust in his provision, surrendering our will to his. It's not about time, it's his will. May we embrace the invitation to total surrender. Experience the fullness of his love, guidance, and blessing as we follow him wholeheartedly. Amen. 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 Give it up for Jesus. Amen. And I want to talk about what uh, four, four more things. It'll be quick. Four more things to uh, follow him in that way. A humble heart a brave heart, a gentle heart, a protective heart, a pure, five, sorry, a pure heart. 
which all lead to what? Trust. Trust. I'm going to repeat it. A humble heart, a brave heart, a gentle heart, a protective heart, a pure heart. Humility reflects that you need him. A brave heart is that you're willing to trust him. A gentle heart because you're going to receive his love and you're willing to receive his love. A protective heart because you don't want his, his love to leave your heart. And a pure heart, going right back to the first one, because you need him. Amen? Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. The good shepherd. shepherd. I don't know. He's here right now. I'm just letting you guys know. So, as we now, how many of you guys understand Jesus a little bit more tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. I was talking to Pastor Carlos uh, this, in the cafeteria, man, and it, it wrecked me, man. It wrecked me so hard. How many of you guys see a lot of the, these videos of the false prophet this, false prophet that, false prophet because you didn't say this? All the time, right? What if I tell you those are, like, just because he, somebody teaches something wrong, right? We're all human. We fall. God calls us to a, a, a heart of repentance. Right? You know that person is still our brother? God calls us to what? If he calls us to love our enemy, what you, what you think he calls us to do to our brother? Do you want to be called a false prophet? Because you just messed up one time? Exactly. My point. Put yourself in other people's shoes. You don't know what that person's going through spiritually. Pray for them. Humble yourself. Pray for that person. Then he'll hear you. But you over here, oh, he a false prophet. Guess what you're doing? Huh? You're speaking curses upon that person. Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Life or death. The good shepherd, lead me. Come on, let's go. Bro, he laid down his life as the greatest form of love. You know, Jesus even died for the Pharisees. You know, he gave them chance after chance after chance after chance after chance to repent. Yes, you are of your father devil because the fruit is evident. Right? Absolutely. If you're led by the spirit, which we all know Jesus was. If we're led by the Spirit, we can't rebuke somebody like that. But Jesus, even then, humbled himself and died on the cross for them. You say who you say you are, then why don't you get off that cross? He didn't say nothing. Stood shut, quiet. Even though he said, your father's the devil, you serpents, you whitewashed tombs. Because they ain't, y'all not listening to the Lord that's in front of you. Where I can, I, 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 can, I can feel it. He was probably frustrated. Probably. I'm not saying he was. He was probably. You see what I'm saying? Bro, he, he wants us to just surrender. To just love and put people above ourselves. The Bible says in the book of Galatians to bear each other's burdens. If I see my brother stumbling, what I look at this, that's what he get. <laughs> okay, the Bible says you reap what you sow. That ain't karma, but that's <laughs> that's how God made it. Oh, you want to play like that? Okay. Okay. You know, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, whatever you do to the least of these, you're doing to me. <laughs> so little that you know that that's you. Oh, look, that's what he get. You saying it to Jesus. Just like the Pharisees were saying in the cross. That's what you get, you blasphemer. 
That's what you get. But we don't want to humble ourselves. Oh, he, he, want to, he want to get the scripture. Father, I just pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, that you just reveal it to him. He was just wrong. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. And you gave no room to the devil. Instead of, instead of just tearing each other down, bro, a kingdom divided against Instead of doing all of that, I saw a video that I explained to you. I was, I was about to explain to you guys. There was two lions beat up. I'm talking about fleshes hanging. Lions. They just probably got out of a, a, a whole fight. They literally. Come here, Pastor Carlos. Bro, they literally sitting in front of each other. This close. You know, they're, they're part of the cat family. So they're like this. Did you know in this video, obviously you guys don't know because you didn't watch it, but in this video, they were literally looking at each other, taking turns licking themselves. What does that licking do for their, for their, their wounds? It heals them. Two animals that are called according, right, according to the world, the king of the jungle, humbling themselves to edify each other. Two kings literally building each other up. But we don't want to be vulnerable because we don't want this person to see our scars. When that's when the king did. He was butt booty naked on the cross. That's what the Bible says. They stripped him. And we saw all his, the Bible says he was unrecognizable. We saw all his scars. And you know what's crazy? It was because of us. Because of us. Because we went astray because we were seeing pleasures of the world. We ran away. Just like the prodigal. Oh, give me all my inheritance and I'm about to go do whatever I want. Then he acknowledged himself, right? And said. I need to go. I need to go back to my father. Because he acknowledged where he was going. He was eating pig food. And when as he was going back home, you know what he told his dad? <sighs> Let me just be a slave to you. Let me just be a slave to you. I just want to be home. All I want, I just want to come home. That's all he said, bro. I just want to come home. Because he acknowledged how wrong he was, how wicked he was, what he did with the inheritance that his father gave him, perverted it, and just went back home. That's all he wanted to do. That's all Jesus wants from you. He just wants you. That's all he wants. He longs for you. This ain't no game. We don't post deliverance, healings, words of knowledge for no reason. This is Jesus Christ. What if I tell you apostles and prophets are moving like that because they love Jesus Christ? Because they surrender their lives. Because they humble themselves daily and God exalts them. And what if I tell you he wants to do with you guys? He wants to do it with every single one of you guys. Ain't nobody here perfect. Every single one of us deserve the wrath of God. Every single one of us. Because we sinned. That's it. He just wants you home. He just, he just wants you home. Amen? I want everybody to close their eyes. And if I tell you, that was the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was the gospel, the good news. That whole thing was the gospel. The good shepherd waiting for you. 
waiting for you to acknowledge how wicked and how much in need that you are, are you are in need of him. And all he wants is he, he, he longs for the intimacy. He long, he's longing for you with so much patience, sending people to pray for you, preach to you, tell you about Jesus. Jesus loves you. He's a real person. He's not an energy. He's not a force. He's not the wind. He is a person standing in this altar right now waiting for you to come back home. All he wants you is to repent. Repent means change, a change of mind. You've changed your mind from eating Chick-fil-A twice a week, from buying a shirt 500 times. All he wants you to do is just change your mind about sin. That's it. And he's going to lead you to paths, that means multiple paths of righteousness, which carry blessings, abundance, love, and prosperity in all areas of your life, all areas, mentally, your heart, your soul, with your family, restoration, healing, all of it. It's not just money. It's his presence. If you want to come to give your life to Christ tonight, raise your hand. Raise your hand tonight. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. And if there's anybody online that wants to give their life to Christ, I just want to let you know that this message goes to you too. This message goes to you as well. Just because you're not here physically does not mean that you're not here in spirit and in truth. You are here tonight listening to the same message that everybody here in person is receiving. So if you want to give your life to Christ online, put a one in the chat. Put a one alongside with I repent. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He's our good shepherd. I know nobody. Hey, how many people get elected to Christ online? Jesus. Jesus. Nobody came to the physical altar for salvation, but I know there's going to be multiple repentance from this point forward. <laughs> and I was just telling Pastor Carlos about this in the cafeteria. All right, Pastor Carlos? A lot of the times, we do focus on the lost. Absolutely. He does command us, go preach the gospel to all nations. Absolutely. Absolutely. He does. It's a command. But we need to find balance. We need to find balance because we also have to care for the congregation too. Amen. His sheep. You know, the, you, you know there's a study that sheep, physical sheep, the shepherd actually puts oil, actual oil, anoints them so the bugs don't come in their face and blinds them and stuff like that. He takes care of you. Yes, you belong to the Lord. Let him continue maintaining you, caring for you, building you up, feeding you, leading you beside the waters. Amen? Amen. Amen. So raise your hand if you need healing, physical healing. Physical, come on. Come up. If you need, and if you, if you need physical healing, just come up. Just come up. How you, how you guys doing? Very good. What, what you need healing from? My ears is hurt. Your ear? Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's, what's the pain level? Like a six, seven. Six, seven. Amen. What about you? 
Your heart? Yeah. Your physical heart hurts? Yeah. Wow. What's the pain level? Um, say a seven. A seven? Yeah. Have you given your life to Christ? Excuse me? Have you given your life to Christ? Yeah. Wholeheartedly? Yes, sir. With everything? Amen. Sure? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, a lot of the times people's hearts hurts because they're f missing something. Missing somebody. See what I mean? How intimate are you with Jesus? Recently, I've been straying. I won't lie. You've been straying? Yeah. It's okay. All he wants you to do is come back home. Just like the prodigal son. Just come home. That's what he wants. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So I want you, we're going to pray for her. I want you to think about it if you really want to give your life to Christ. Rededicate. Amen? You can just pray for her ear. Healing in Jesus' name. Amen. So just lay hands on her and just pray for, for full healing. Her, it, it's her ear, the back of her ear, right? So you said it's like a six or a seven? Amen. Just pray for healing. Everybody, stretch out your hand. Everybody, stand up. Come on. This is our sister in Christ, right? Everybody, pray in the spirit. Come on. Healing in Jesus' name. What's the pain? Like a pulse. Like a small pulse? Yeah, so the pain, it comes in and out like every minute. Okay, so what is it now? Um, right now, I don't feel anything. You don't feel nothing? So every minute you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Let's uh, uh, come on. In the name, say, say what is it? Just relax. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name, I cast this care. I cast this care upon you. Upon you. It no longer belongs to me. It no longer belongs to me. I'm healed. I'm healed. I belong to you. I belong to you. I'm your sheep. I'm your sheep. And I'm healed. And I'm healed. Because you care for me. Because you care for me. You take care of me. Take care of me. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole right now. Be made whole. Be made whole right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you here in Jesus' name. There's nothing gonna be nothing gonna be there. Man. What's up, man? I'm ready. Ready for what? I'm ready to give my life to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's all he wants, bro. That's all he wants, just be a son. It's, it's cool to be a Jesus lover. Amen. <laughs> or how many people say a Jesus freak. But they just get that confused because we're just sheep following our shepherd. In this wicked world where there's so many wolves, hungry, desperate, seeking for something. That's it. And we got, every, we got everything. He, he literally is everything. You think about everything? Jesus. That's everything. He created. Think about how big and, and profound the universe is. You ever thought about that? Like how like long and like all these new things that scientists be finding and like a star uh, galactical proximity, whatever. Like they be naming all these things. Isn't that crazy that Jesus made all of that? We're just simply saying... Let there be light. Ah, what the heck? Yet he wants a relationship with you. You know, it's scientific, uh, scientifically proven that they saw a shape of a human person in the, in the galaxy. You can look it up. It's scientifically proven. Look it up. And even NASA is referencing that shape to Jesus. NASA, bro. So you tell me, is the Bible catching up now in 2024, or is humans trying to catch up to the Bible? Humans. Think about that, bro. Amen. So just, I just want you to relax. 
Do you have any unforgiveness towards anybody? Who? Um, just people that did me wrong in the past. Who? Remember I talked about vulnerability? Hey, bro. Hey, we can put the mic down. Put your hands up. Just say, Father, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I forgive, say their names, and everything you just told me. I'm gonna give you a second. Relax. There's anybody that needs deliverance? Raise your hand. Come on. What's up, Sarah? How you doing? Good, good. Come on, Deacon. Pray for her. Come on, Deacon, this is. Come on. Pray for her right here. Pastor, pray for my brother. What you need deliverance for? Smoking weed. Smoking weed, so addiction, yeah. you feel like addicted? Of course. Amen. Praise God. You ready to let it go? Mm -hmm. What else? What else you been holding on to in your life? In your heart? Against anything about family members, aunties. I forgive all my family. Even if it's an inch. Like when you think about that person, you think about love. Yeah, of course. I love everybody. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Just renounce it. Pastor Benji, you're going to start casting some things out if you need to come out. Amen. You need. You, you need deliverance too. You need deliverance too. Amen. Pastor Carlos, you ready? Let's do it. Come on. Emily, come here. Come on. Vulnerable. Come on. Be vulnerable. Vulnerability. This is where your breakthroughs at. Be vulnerable. Be open to Jesus. Every y'all too. Vulnerability. We all need healing. We all need deliverance. Whether it be in the mind, whether it be some demons getting casted out. A lot of our deliverance is gonna be by reading the word and open being vulnerable to God when He starts changing your mind. Amen. Let it go. How's your ear? Huh? Is is good? It hurts? Come on. I felt yeah. 
Então, vamos ver.
Raise your hand if you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. In the spirit and fire. In the spirit and fire. If you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, come up right now. If you don't believe, come up right now. If you don't understand, come up right now. Come up. Come up. What you, what you don't understand? she comes up the Holy Spirit is encountering her that's all he wants have you given your life to Christ come on are you ready it's time it's time Savior you're gonna save you look you know what I want you to do give her a big hug like if he was Jesus give her a big hug Coming home tonight. You need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Come up. In the baptism of fire. Spirit of fire. One more time. If you don't know, if you don't understand. We will explain it to you biblically. Going once, going twice. Amen. Praise God. Who need to get baptized in water? Water baptism. You got baptized before? So you need to get baptized. That's the first step of faith. You believe, you repent it, then get baptized. You ready? You too? Baptism on fire. I, okay, amen. Let's get it. The baptism of fire. You know, you know, I'm going to say this again. If you need to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, come up. Just because, let me say this, just because you don't speak in tongues doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Ghost. You do have the Holy Ghost if you're saved. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is just you getting endued with power to be, to be able to overcome the things of the enemy, the, the strategies, the plans, all these things, because then he'll give you a, a gift that's called discernment of spirits. And then you start discerning things that you couldn't even be able to discern last week. It's supernatural. Amen. Baptism of fire. Amen. So you ready? Give your life to Christ. Put your hands down. Relax. Say, Jesus, I repent. I changed my mind. I changed my lifestyle. I let it go. I believe you are the Son of God. You were crucified. You were buried and rose on the third day. I leave all my sins at the cross. I receive your blood. I receive, I receive my inheritance, my, inheritance. my, identity, my identity in you. In you. I'm, a I'm a daughter. I'm a queen. I'm a queen. Exalted, Exalted with you. With you. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, right now, feel it. Feel it. Feel it right now.
go, let's go, let's go. Woman of God, come here. Come here. So for the baptism of fire, give me a quick second, guys. I, 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 hey, y'all, y'all going crazy, bro. I love it. I know y'all. Hey, I want to go crazy with y'all. I just want to explain something real quick. I love worship. Y'all love worship. Hey, them boys go crazy every night. Every night. Hey, I want to honor you guys. Y'all, y'all, y'all go crazy. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Ghost. He lives inside of you. Amen? He lives inside of you. He lives inside of you. But the Holy Spirit, Him living inside of you is like drinking water. You're saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Praise God. The baptism is like going underwater in the spirit room. You're getting immersed inside of Him and His power. Amen. The evidence of that is the speaking of tongues, which is a babbling. Right? Watch this. Raise your hand if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Turn around and look. Do you guys understand what you're saying? When you're when you're praying in tongues? You see what I'm saying? Unless the Holy Spirit gives you the interpretation of it. You see what I'm saying? Say it again. I speak in tongues or I already have it. You speak in tongues? Amen. You baptize in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Reba Kandarabo Soti Arabaye. The baptism when when the disciples waited. You know the story, right? In Acts chapter 2. They waited in the upper room. Right? Because Jesus said, wait to be endued with what? Power. They already had the Holy Ghost living inside of them because he breathed it on them. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So that means the Holy Ghost already living inside of them. But wait to go get and do with power. And the power comes from who? The Holy Ghost. Because he, when, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, in the spirit and fire, you get gifts. Isn't that crazy? To discern spirits, speak in new tongues, healing, cast out the, all these things. What if I tell you, you know one of the gifts? And many people forget about this. The gift of faith. Many people rely on their own faith. The spirit gives you a gift. Faith. That's not our faith. That's his faith, supernatural, eternal faith, crazy faith, faith that you don't even understand. You'd be like, I don't even know why I did that, because the Holy Spirit, he shook you up, go do it, praise God, I'm just going to do it. That was his faith. What if I tell you that he wants you to partner up with that faith to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Speaking in tongues, it's a language. A eternal language. Reba katarabu soti is a babbling. Paul said he don't even understand. How many of you guys understand tongues? You understand it? You understand it, do you? Unless the Holy Spirit. But do you understand it? Exactly my point. Nobody here. So that means Paul was just. Hey, da, 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 da. It says that, don't he, don't he sound like a baboon? What does a baboon sound like? Come on. It says it's a groaning. What do you think baboons do? <laughs> they groan all the time, all day. Right? You're going to look like a fool. But God takes the foolish things. 
God takes the foolish things. I'm telling you. And he turns them out. I'm telling you. You ready? As you begin to speak in the Holy Spirit, you pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit is praying through you. Because it's his gift to you. So it's the Holy Spirit praying through you to the Father, the perfect will of God over your life in faith. Do you understand that? It sounds weird, but what if I tell you that's the truth? Facts change, truth doesn't. Does that make sense? So watch this. Let's, let's do an exercise real quick. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin, how you doing? I'm good. I'm Did you think about that response? You didn't. You see what I'm saying? I am doing good. You, you're good. But, but, but you, did you think about that response? Uh, no, I didn't think At about it. At all. So no. you have faith in yourself to speak and say good. Yeah, I do. So you have faith. I have faith. Did you think about it? Wait, wait. I got to say G-O-O-D and uh, space. I, uh, no. In faith, you just spoke. It's the same thing with tongues. Close your eyes. Focus on the Holy Ghost. And you're going to feel the fire. I feel you. Does that make sense? What's your favorite sport? Did you think about that? Not at all. What's the difference? Ain't no difference. So y'all ready? All right. So just relax. I want you to think about one thing. Jesus. Amen. Just close your eyes and repeat after me. Say, Jesus, baptize me in your spirit and fire in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you ready? Holy Spirit, I pray right now you feel him. Feel him right now. Feel him right now. Feel him. Feel him. Feel him. Feel him. Feel them. Feel them. Everybody stand up in the crowd. Start praying with us in the Holy Ghost. Feel them right now, Holy Ghost. Start praying with us. You already? Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So pray in the Holy Ghost. You too. Close your eyes. Focus on Jesus. Take your hands out of your pockets. Focus on the Holy Ghost. Just open up your mouth and pray. I promise you, that's all you got to do. Reba kate rebo soti araba kate. Roba kanda la ba sekete. Ma senda raba kanda lebo soti araba. There you go. Go ahead. Ma reba kanda la ba soti araba kate. Like a trumpet. Y'all ready? He raba kando robo soti araba kate. He raba kaya araba. There you go, woman of God. Blast like a trumpet. Roma senda raba sekete ya. Reba kato lobo sondo lobo se. Reba ba 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 sekete leba yanda labo soti ya. Don't think about it. Think about Jesus. Think about his fire, his presence, his power. Reba kanda la bosote. Masaya reba kanda la bosote. Is there anybody that need to get back to the Holy Ghost in the crowd? Come up. You giving your life to Christ? Come up. You ready? You, you heard the, 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 the understanding? All right, come up. Focus on Jesus. Relax and receive and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, baptize him in the Spirit right now in fire. Say, Jesus, baptize me in your Spirit and fire and have faith. I ain't even got to lay hands. Focus on Jesus and start praying with us. Everybody, blast tongues. Holy Spirit, come in like a gust of wind. Like a gust of wind, Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Hey, people giving her items in the name of Jesus. Look at that. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill them in Jesus' name.
Is anybody worried because of a family member in here? Anybody worried because of family? Come up. Right here. Anybody worried because of family members? Come up. Be vulnerable to God. Come up. Right here. Let's go down. Let's go down. Yeah, you can say. Come up. Right here. Line up right here in the front. Right here. Line them up. Come on. Come on. Don't be scared. Come on. Don't be shy. We don't bite here. You got baptized in the Holy Ghost? How'd I feel? Woo! Supernatural. Your whole life about to change. You got deliverance, gave your life to Christ, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Guess what's next? Get baptized in water. You ready? Yeah. You baptizing? Hey. Go with Pastor, Pastor Benji's gonna. If you need to get baptized out there, follow Pastor Benji. Pastor Benji, raise your hand. Follow Pastor Benji. Amen. If you need to get baptized, you get baptized? Hallelujah. You need to get baptized? You, no, I mean, I got baptized last week. You got baptized in the Holy Ghost, too. Yes, sir. You too? You got baptized in fire? He's like, what the heck? Amen. Hey, man. Hey, man. Did you pray for the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. In tongues? Yeah. Then you got baptized in fire. Did you feel the fire? Yeah. That consuming fire? Yes, I Isn't that? Heat. Straight Just straight heat. Straight heat. What'd you feel? Straight heat. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is. Hallelujah. Like electricity at the same time. Yeah, I never felt it before. Come on. Hey. You know, let me say this. You will never forget this. You know why? It's not an experience. It's an encounter. You can experience something and always forget it. You start losing memory of it over time. An encounter, you'll never forget it. I bet you everybody remembers the, the first encounter with the Holy Ghost in the walk. Right, but you had many experiences of preaching the gospel, many experiences. What healing the sick? You can't remember all of them. Not crazy. So, what was what's going on with your family member? Uh, my brother, he's currently in the hospital right now because uh, they don't know if his, if his gallbladder is going bad or his appendix or something. I don't know myself. I felt I, I felt this. You too. Family member in hospital, or something like that. Sickness. You too? Yeah. What, what, what's up with your family? Son. Your son? What happened with your son? Uh, trying to die or something like that. Autism. Okay. Hey, man, yeah, you told me about that. What about you? Family. Your family? Yes. Okay. So, what about you? A lot of witchcraft. A lot of um, my brother is locked up right now. So he's going through a lot. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. What about you? My son. Your son. What happened with your son? I see him lonely. You see him lonely? Feel very rejected and stuff. Where's he at? Is he here? What's his name? Nicholas. Nicholas. Amen. Feels very rejected, depressed, all that stuff. Amen. So, Father, come on, get get. Let's get on our knees together with the Lord. You ready? Father, we just thank you. What's your name? What's your name? Martha. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you for Martha, for Martha, Father. Thank you. Thank you that she loves you. She loves her son, Father. Father, we just pray right now. Every spirit of depression following Nicholas right now, we bind that spirit. The Bible says where two or more agree, every word is established by you, Father. The Bible says if you will humble yourself and just pray, then you will hear. Father, we bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. It can no longer touch him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, all rejection must go. All depression must go. All of it, leave that. Leave his life right now in the name of Jesus. It gets cut off right now. Every, every generational spirit of depression be destroyed, be dismantled right now. Every altar of witchcraft over my brother's life right now. Over my brother's life right now here. Right now. Every generational witchcraft. Be off his life right now. Be off this bloodline in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Pastor Carlos, come on. Come here. As we go, you lay hands. Okay. All generational witchcraft be broken off is my, my brother right now. All of it go. All of it go. All of it. We pray for his brother too. Father, the Bible says whatever we lose here on earth will be loose in heaven. We lose angels to give him strength. We lose, we lose angels that have your presence. That will encounter him in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. We pray for my sister right here. Every generational spirit of addiction be broken off this bloodline right now in the name of Jesus. Over her mother, her aunt, brothers, sisters, everybody. It stops now. All of it. Off the bloodline in Jesus' name. Off the bloodline in Jesus' name. Every altar of witchcraft too. Of new age. We send fire upon them and destroy it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray for our brother Lewin right now. And his son. We pray against every lie. Every lie of infirmity. Over this blood. This bloodline. The Bible says that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. It's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we speak death unto that spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. It be dismantled off his bloodline right now. Off his bloodline. All of it go. All of it go. His son does not have autism. We cancel that lie. We cancel that contract in the name of Jesus Christ. All of it. Come off. Come off. All of it go. All of it go in the name of Jesus Christ. Be destroyed. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Come out of him right now. Come out of him. All of it go. Out of his belly. The only thing coming out of his belly from now on will be rivers of living water in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. All of it go. All of it go in the name of Jesus. And every piece of his heart that ever been broken, we gather it right now in the name of Jesus. And we place it right now in his heart. To be, be restored and healed. Full healing in his heart too. No more rejection. He is not rejected. He's going to be a mighty evangelist. He already is. Thank you, Father, that you chose him. You chose him. And nobody can take him and snatch you out of, their, out of, out of your hand. Because you're the good shepherd. Robaka. Keep praying for Pastor Carlos. Come on, Tyler. You're going to lay hand. Robaka. Come on, Tyler. I'm going to pray for your brother too. I want you to say this. What's his name? Jamal. Jamal. Mm -hmm. Say say this. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I stand in the gap for Jamal. I stand in the gap for Jamal. You go, Pastor Carlos is back. Come on, Pastor. Lay him. Uh huh. Stand in the gap for. I stand in the gap for Jamal. And I cancel. And I cancel. Every word curse. Every word curse. Every word curse. Spoken. Spoken. Over Jamal. Over Jamal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that. So, Father, we just pray for Jamal right now. Full healing from head to toe. Full healing from head to toe right now. The Bible says that kind words bring what? Life to the bones. Say what? Sweetness to the soul and health to the bone. So we just pray that right now. Father, according to your will, over Jamal. Full healing in the name of Jesus. Anything that's trying to attach itself to the gallbladder, all of it, every organ, every cell, be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's done. Get closer. So we're going to keep going back. You receive prayer? You good. What you need prayer for? Your brother. What happened with your brother? Y'all all together? You two together or separate? Your brother, what happened with your brother? Him right there? Another one. Amen. That's okay. It's like he's always isolated. Isolating himself? It's a long distance. Isn't it weird that we have a long distance relationship with Jesus? It feels like it. Amen. That's, that's all right. That's all right. You love your brother a lot. Yeah. Amen. That's who you grow with. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, just let it go. Be vulnerable, bro. When you are weak, he is strong. It's not talking about your brother. It's talking about Jesus. When you are weak, he is strong. When you're broken, he's strong. When you're down, he's strong. Huh? When you're down, he's strong. Yeah, exactly. You ready? What's his name? 
Huh? Jaden. Geo? Jaden. Jaden. Yeah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for Jaden. Father, I pray that you show him your love. Show him your everlasting love. Father, we just pray against every generational spirit of rejection over this bloodline. In the name of Jesus, we cancel it right now. We come, say, both of you guys say this. We come out of agreement. Come out of agreement with rejection. I'm not rejected. I'm not rejected. I'm selected and elected, chosen by Jesus Christ himself. In Jesus' name. So, Father, right now, we just pray for both of their hearts. Right now, both of their hearts. Be healed. Be healed. The hearts be healed from rejection. No more depression, too. No more depression, too. Every wave of depression that tries to hit them will, will bounce back because the presence of God will be covering them in the name of Jesus. They're trusting in the Lord, the, the, the good shepherd. In Jesus' name, even his son, her, her brother. I mean, uh, his brother and her son. In Jesus' name, amen. What's up? Can die at any time, any time. Amen. You know what the Bible says? That Jesus Christ has the keys of life and death. <laughs> so it's not up to the doctors. That's what I said. It's up to Jesus. Amen. And where two or more agree, every word is established by the Father. So at the end of the day, it's whatever he wants. Is he saved? Um, I think he lived he gave his he grew up in the church, Pentecostal. Mm-hmm. He was battling. Um, you know the gospel. You come here a lot. Yeah. Preach the gospel too. I always do. But yeah. he's in Massachusetts, so we do it face to face. Hey. And I worship with him. Hey. And I speak life with him. Can he move? Uh, he can't talk, but he, he can he can go certain times. Okay. So say, preach the gospel. You want to give your life to Jesus? Preach the detailed gospel. Detailed. He gave his life to Jesus because I have um, an aunt and an uncle that go there. Every time I see him, he gave his life. Okay, amen. So hey, we're, we're going to pray for full healing. I believe. I believe. Do you believe? I believe. Do you believe? Do y'all believe? Yes. Everybody stand up for this brother. What's his name? Um, Eddie Ferrer. Eddie? Ferrer. 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 Ferrero. Ferrer. 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 Yes. Puerto Rican. Ferrer. Father, we just thank you for Eddie. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command healing in the mind, the soul, the whole body, every cell, every bone, the whole, the, all the arteries in the heart, Father. Any spirit of death following this family, we we cancel that assignment. We bind that spirit. We cast it down into the abyss right now in the name of Jesus. We cancel that. We cancel that contract right now, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we just lose angels of healing, angels that carry your presence, angels that carry your, your strength, angels of spiritual warfare into that hospital room that will fight off anything that isn't from you, God, and they will be worn in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, they're loosed. They're loosed. Amen. Y'all come into agreement? Amen. I, hey, I believe it. That's all right with me. Y'all believe? Amen. Praise God. What about you? Bitterness and stuff. Amen. All right. What, 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 what's the name? Come on, Deaconess Maria. Deaconess Tavia, let, let, lay hand on the woman. On the woman of God. Ready? What's the name again? Nathaniel. <laughs> Father, we just pray for Nathaniel in the name of Jesus. We come against all bitterness in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, the Bible says that there was a man that told you, I believe, but help my unbelief. Father, help their unbelief. Holy Spirit, come in like a gust of wind into their presence with your faith. With your faith, Holy Ghost. We thank you for Nathaniel. Father, I pray that you reveal to him that he needs to forgive. Reba kandarabo sotia. That Ariel goes to him with love, buys him a gift, comes to him with humility, and that would change the course in the name of Jesus. Because love covers a multitude of sins, and pride is an abomination to the Lord. But love will cover that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, sometimes it's just the action we got to take. Hey, hey, come, come down. Come down. Come down. The Holy Ghost is about to take over again. What's up, Ivan? I, just, I worry about my brother sometimes. You worry? Yeah, I worry. The Bible says cast all your worries unto the Lord. No more worry. Amen. 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 That's how you humble yourself, actually. Ready? So say, Father, Father, I repent. I repent. I cast, I cast all my worries, all my worries onto, you. onto you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. So what happened with your brother? It's just the lifestyle he leads. Okay. Hey, amen. The Holy Ghost is the one that changed and trans. You know the Bible says that no one goes onto the Son unless the Father draws them in. So you, Kitty, bro, the Father. That's the words of who. They were written in red, right? Amen. Yeah, it was written in red. Amen. So you ready to let go? Yes. Okay. So Father. Father. I place. I place. My brother. My brother. In your hands. In your hands. There's nothing I could do. There's nothing I can do. But show your fruit. But show your fruit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That you're gonna handle him. Your staff, your staff and your rod, and your rod will, comfort him. will comfort him in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's done. What's up, woman of God? I'm here for my grandma. What's up with your grandma? Um, had a stroke and she's paralyzed. Amen. The Bible says that God is a God of restoration. He restores anything he wants. And it's according to his will. Come on. So what's your grandma's name? I'm smiling because the moment we pray, it's already done and, it's, and we're victorious. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? That's it. According to his will. So Heavenly Father, what's, your, what's her name again? Patricia. Patricia. Father, we thank you for Patricia. All of us in the congregation. It's not just me praying. It's everyone. It's every single one of us, Jesus. It's not just me. Father, we're two of them. I'm going to keep saying it. We're two of them. We agree. Every word is established by you, Father. We're bringing you the petition. Like, if, you know a petition? You, you can petition it in court. Did you know that, right? Did y'all know that? So we're bringing the petition to a courtroom where, where, where the judge is on our side <laughs> and the devil lost. So we won the court case anyways. So, Father, we thank you for Patricia. That by your stripes, she's healed. Is she saved? Okay. So, Father, according to your word, salvation equals healing. Father, she's saved. So I pray in the authority of Jesus Christ that you will heal her, Father. And I thank you that you're doing it because you're a good, good father. You're a good shepherd. And that's what you desire. Healing. 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 And every spirit of death, every spirit of infirmity trying to follow this family, we, we come out of agreement. Every single one, every single soldier in this congregation, every single saint, every single sheep come into agreement. And we cast down those unclean spirits and generational curses in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's up, Trey? 
Your wife, what happened with your wife? Amen. 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 Your children, who? Uh, my oldest son, Brennan. And his wife. Brennan? Yeah. And, and, and his wife? My daughter, Aaliyah. Aaliyah? And my daughter, Aubrey. Aubrey, okay. Amen. So, Father, Schultz is your last name. Father, we thank you for the Schultz family. We thank you, Father, that you would draw them in. Because your word says that you wish none would perish but come to repentance. Father, and by our prayers and our belief and our unity here right now, because you are here in this, in this atmosphere. You're here. You're here, Jesus. You're on, the, you're on the stage. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you that they won't perish. Thank you that they won't perish, Lord. Because as we're praying in unity... Hot, re hot coals, hot, right? Reaping coals are falling on their head, Deaconess Maria. You're convicting them right now. They probably even watching online. Hey, Yaraba, Sotere, Bakate. Holy Spirit, touch them. Brennan, Aaliyah, Brittany, Rebecca, and Brennan's wife, touch them. Touch them, Holy Ghost, from head to toe encounter them let them jump out of bed not knowing what's going on but they run to you jesus in the name of jesus amen amen, amen. you know in the name of jesus you know that word that that word the in, in the name like name in the greek means authority <laughs> what's up kamari we're praying in the authority of jesus christ oh it's, my god i feel his authority like all over that you feel him Oh my gosh, he's here. Ah, y'all thought I was, bro, I'm not playing, I'm not tripping. He's here. What's up? Your mom, what happened with your mom? Uh, I got a call saying that um, she had went to the psychologist because she was having thoughts of suicide. And so she said that she was going to end her life for that kind of way. She didn't want to leave who she started to be in the world with. So. What's your name? Yolanda. 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 Amen. <laughs> Father, I come to you smiling because I know what you're capable of. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for Yolanda. And every unclean spirit of death, depression over her life, be bound up right now in chains. In chains, in chains, in the name of Jesus. Right now, be bound in the name, in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of addiction, be bound in the name of Jesus. Whatever we bound here, whatever we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Father, those spirits cannot follow her where she's going and she's going to heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast those spirits down right now. We cast them down right now in Jesus' mighty name. They cannot enter the kingdom of God. That woman will prophesy. That woman will preach the word. That woman will receive prophecies from you and they will come to pass, Lord. Dreams and visions. Not only by her, by her mouth, but she'll write them down and they will come to pass. Because of the communion she's going to have with you. The communion, the communion, the communion in the name of Jesus. Every generational spirit be destroyed. Every generational curse be, be dismantled in this blood. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you so much. What you need to pray for? For my dad. What's up with your dad? He's like in really, really severe depression. Amen. Since my mom passed. Amen. Um, addiction and witchcraft. Amen. Don't feel bad because I'm smiling. I just know what he's capable of. <laughs> I just know. Okay, he's, he's the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. 
You know what I mean? So you follow him, you hear his voice. And his word, right? His Bible is a part of his, is, is how he speaks, right? Amen. So he says that he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding, not depression. He won't give you the spirit of fear, but the love, power, and self mind. So we're going to pray that over your dad. Addiction is, is going to turn from addiction to drugs to addiction to his presence. Amen. I believe that. You too? I believe that. Y'all believe that? I believe that. Oh, my gosh. Bro, I know what he's getting. I, I see it. I, I don't know what's going on today, but this is like a different type of, oh, my gosh. Jesus, I love you. Everybody say, just focus on Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing today. Oh, man. What's your dad's name? Mel? Mel? Batista. Does he have, does he have like, slick hair back? But, but, like, he usually does it back? I don't I just felt, is, is, is his hair gray? But I just saw, like, a vision of him. That's crazy. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for Mel. He's staying with you guys? He's staying with you guys. Miami. Father, we just thank you for Mel Batista right now in the name of Jesus. Wow. Hmm. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, have your way. Do your thing. Everybody just pray in tongues low. Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray against every spirit of addiction, every spirit of depression to come off right now in the name of Jesus. Come off a of male right now in the name of Jesus. And come off of this generational curse. All of it be destroyed right now. Come off of Melise. Come off of Vivian. That generational curse will be broken. They were not attached to it right now in the name of Jesus. They come out of agreement right now in the name of Jesus. And we just pray for Mel. Mel, that he loves Melise so much. He loves me so much, Father. We cast, that, we cast down that spirit of addiction towards alcohol. We pray against the spirit of alcohol in the name of Jesus Christ. Y'all know alcohol is an actual spirit, right? It's literally like A-L-K or something like that. A-L-K, alcohol. Cast down that spirit of alcohol right now in the name of Jesus over his life. And all addiction, all, all of it go down to the abyss in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit with chains. We chain it up right now in the name of Jesus. All of it. Come off of Mel right now. Father, I pray right that you give him a desire. The Bible says whatever we ask in your name and we believe it, we shall receive. Father, give him a desire to read your word tonight. To seek your presence tonight. In the secret place tonight. Tonight. Tug on his heart like never before, Holy Spirit. Tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jesus. Jesus. What's up, my brother? What you need prayer for? Um, I want to uh, pray for my brother. I pray for him. Uh, Every day, uh, I just want some extra firepower because I know that he's going to come to repentance soon. I see it in the spirit, um, but I just want some extra firepower. Yeah, I, I, I know the spirits he struggles with for sure. Um, he definitely struggles with rejection. I know that his he has different dads. His dad left him at a young age, um, and he, he 
definitely felt rejected his whole life. Um, and uh, it, it's manifested in a lot of his relationships. And uh, so I know that he, he struggles with anger, um, lost really badly, uh, pornography, um, um, a lot of things. And I just I see it. I know, I know God has a, has a powerful plan for him. And he and I will both as brothers stand the, God, the gospel and the kingdom of, of our Father. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. What's his name? His name is James. <laughs> like the apostle. <laughs> Isn't that crazy that most of the people up here like have like biblical names and stuff? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? God trying to say something. Hey. Father, we just thank you for James. Thank you for James. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the, the opportunity that you gave him down here on earth, Father. Father, the Bible says we're two or more agree. Every word's established. Come to you with thanksgiving. And we petition, Father, for an encounter for James, an encounter, an encounter because you wish none would perish but come to repentance, that you will turn a heart of stone to flesh. Father, turn his heart of a stone to flesh. Revive his soul. Tug on his heart, Father. Send the angels, lose the angels right now. And that's according to your word. And Father, we close it out with this for every single prayer of every single family member. The book of Isaiah, everybody say the book of Isaiah, book of Isaiah. chapter 55. You know what it says? Father, you know what it says. It says that your word will never return void. We thank you that your word, every single prayer, petition, according to your will, is being done right now. It's already done. It's already done. Already. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's it. How's your ear? It's still hurting? You got, you got crazy deliverance, though. Bro, that's crazy. Oh, what's up? I thought you were catching. What's up, Deja? Um, I just want prayer for my family. My dad and his whole side of the family is in Islam. Um, all of our last names are Hassan, and I'm believing that God is going to save them. Amen. Amen. Let's do it. Let's pray for the Hassan family. Father, we thank you for the Hassan family. Father, you desire, you long for them. You desire a relationship with them. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the Hassan family, that you will encounter them like you're doing many Muslims. You're doing many Muslims all over the world. Father, we just come to you tonight asking you that. The Hassan family be one of them right now. And even if, even if the Hassan family go even back to Pakistan right now, that they be encountered. All the Muslims right now in the name of Jesus be encountered by the Holy Ghost. All the Muslims, bring them to Christ, Father. They got, they got crazy faith. Bring them all to Christ to preach your gospel. That they will come to repentance. And preach your word and many prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, apostles will come out of them in the name of Jesus. Thank you. That is done. And the church says together, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all ready to do communion? Yeah. Hallelujah. I need a communion cup. Thank you so much. Woo! God is good. How many of y'all still here? Okay. Are we falling asleep? No. You can't. You can't fall asleep in this. Hallelujah. Anybody miss, uh, need a communion cup? Raise your hand. Raise your hand.
Hey, give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus, man. Give it up for Pastor Joel, too. Pastor Joel, powerful message. And hey, we honor that man of God. Man, y'all caught Revelation? <laughs> Yo, I caught some crazy Revelation. I seen this in the spirit, too. Everybody stand up. Matter of fact, everybody come. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. I want everybody, we're going to do this in, in one accord. Because you know what I think of when I think of communion? This is our victory. This is our victory. Why do you think Jesus says to do this in my remembrance? Why do you think that we as the body of Christ have to do this so often? Because this, when you sin, I'll put it like this. When you sin, you fall. And what comes with sin? And what else comes with sin? Separation. Separation. What else comes with sin? Condemnation. What else comes with sin? Depression. What else comes with sin? Rejection. All these things come from sin. So when you fall into sin, all of that weight falls on you. Who's been feeling condemned recently? Put your hand up. Ain't nobody Superman in here. Who's been feeling rejection? Be honest. I want me to be honest? All of us. Ain't nobody in here like, I don't feel condemned. No, sir. Not in this life. Not with everything that goes on outside of these walls. Not with the constant spiritual warfare that you face every single day. So when you do communion, I want the body of Christ to break out of religion and doing this so like, thank you, Father God, the bread, and here's the wine, and thank you, Jesus. No, bro. This is our redemption sealed. This is a, a little piece of bread that probably tastes like plastic, and this is a little bit of sweet grape juice. But by the Spirit, this is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Jesus that sealed your redemption, that sealed your victory, that sealed that, that you cannot be condemned because of the blood. You cannot be rejected because of the body of Jesus Christ that hung on that cross you can't. And naturally, as humans, we, we forget that. God knew that it would be in our character, that it, it's just in our nature that we need to be constantly reminded of the finished work. So that's why I had you guys stand up. That's why I had you come to the altar, because today we're going to leave all that sin at this altar. Today we're going to leave all that rejection, everything that we've been feeling. We're going to leave it right here. So let's pull out the, the bread. Hold up, okay. This is the body. When I think about what happened, when I think about the crucifixion, one question that always comes to my mind is like, why did it have to be so bad? Like, why did that have to be so graphic? And I don't know about you guys, but I study it. Like, I, I look up, like, scientific, like, of the crucifixion and, and how the Romans were so, like, skilled at it. And they've mastered how to, like, nail you to a cross so you don't die right away, so you don't bleed out. All the, all the like, how your organs fall and... How the, your blood pressure rises and stops and, and you begin to get filled with fluids and like all these crazy things. And in my head, I'm like, but why was it so bad? Y'all know that sin equals death. Blood equals life. Y'all know that God is holy. This is for somebody. God is holy. He's pure. He can't be next to filth. He can't be near sin. He can't. He's an omni potent, omnipresent, out of space, out of time, out of everything. He cannot be even remotely near sin. He can't. It's out of his character. He's a just God. He can't be around it. So something had to take the place of the sin. And when you think about an animal that doesn't have a conscience, that doesn't have will, and you think about the sacrificing of the animals, that was a gift that God gave Israel. It was mercy because that wasn't even close to a sufficient of sacrifice that, that needed to be for sin. You know that one sin puts one sin sends you to hell? 
You know that if you lie once, even if it's a white lie, you're a liar? You know that if you take even a piece of candy, you're a thief? And you deserve death? You know that when you feel rejection, that's because of sin? It's because of sin. So there needed to be a willing, living, breathing, decision-making vessel that had to be spotless. The book of Romans talks about how sin has mastery over your life. That because you were born into a because you were born into sin, now sin has mastery. Mastery means full control over your life. But because of the body of Jesus and the perfect sacrifice that he was on the cross, the mastery of sin over your life is broken. Hallelujah. Isn't that crazy? Hallelujah. Man. So the bread. This little piece of bread represents the perfect body that was on the cross. It represented Yeshua HaMashiach, the perfect living, because he's still alive, sacrifice. You know, he had a personality. You know, he was funny. You know, they invited him to a wedding because he was cool to be around. You know, he, he told jokes and he, he, he teased his disciples, oh, you of little faith. Because he's not just this judge in the sky that's going to send you to hell, man. He was a real person. And I want us to break out of the religion that he's not a person. He was a per He still is a person. That's what the bread represents. That's what it represents. Don't lose it, body of Christ. Don't lose that. This is him. Everything you do is by faith. Everything that you believe in and when it comes to this walk is by faith. But now your, your mind gets something physical to look at so it can make a little more sense to you. The bread. You may break. The bread like his body was broken and you may eat. Mm, mm, mm. The blood of Jesus. Wow. Now this is the blood. In the Old Testament, it was by lineage that the high priests were able to enter into the temple. They had to be ceremonially clean. They had to do ceremonial washings and have the sacrifice, the blood in their hands, and, and only one could go into the holies of holies. And he would sprinkle that blood on the mercy seat to atone for the sins of Israel. You know, because of the blood of Jesus, every single one of you in this right now is a, is a high priest. You know that you guys could enter the holies of holies you don't have to be wearing white. You don't have to be born of a lineage. You didn't have to be ceremonially clean. This is the blood of Jesus, the, the sacrifice. That same blood covers you and makes you white as snow. I want us to get out of this spiritual warfare mentality and, and start pleading the blood. Because this blood right here will destroy any altar, it, is, it heals any sickness. This blood will deliver you from anything that you are going to because this blood right here, it silenced the accuser. The accuser is in the, in, the, in the courtrooms of heaven telling God about everything you do wrong. And you know what Jesus' response is? My blood. <laughs> the blood. To receive the blood of Jesus is so simple. You humble yourself. You humble yourself and you say, I need a savior. I, I, I'm wrong. I'm wretched. I'm filthy and I can't do it. So you go to your knees and you go to him and you say, God, I need you. And he looks at all your sins. He looks at all your lusts, all of your rejection. He looks at it and he pleads his blood. Now that mastery of sin is broken over your life. You are spotless. 
You are blameless. You are a king. You are a queen in Christ because of the finished work. I want everybody to examine their heart. Paul says, examine your heart. Don't take this blood unjust. If there's any unforgiveness dwelling in your heart, release it now. Anybody you got something against anything, you forgive them right now. This is a moment between you and God. In the book of Exodus, it says that when, after they sacrificed the lamb and they were walking out of Egypt because Pharaoh finally let them go, it says that none of them were weak. None of them were weary. They were all strong. If there, was any heal, if there was any sickness or anything in them that was making them weak, it was the blood of the lamb that made them strong. So this is a miracle working blood still till this day. And I want us to treat it as just, right? You may drink. Mm. Mm. Give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every hand up. Every hand up. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your body. We thank you for your blood. We thank you, Father God, because we're your remnant. We are your remnant, Father. I pray that you fill them with grace, more grace, more mercy in their life, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the finished work on the cross. Lord, we receive it. We humble ourselves. Lord, I pray that everybody get home safely. I pray that angels be loosed in any backlash and retaliation, Father. I pray that everybody goes into the secret place tonight and just cries out to you. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless y'all. God bless y'all.